the Nick Starkle experience rolls into week two here at Reynolds Razorback Stadium. High fives abound after 55 points and a fourth quarter stellar performance from their quarterback as the Hogs make another appearance in Northwest Arkansas as they host San Jose State on an SEC Saturday night. And a pleasant good evening, everybody. I'm Dave Neal. This is former SEC Championship quarterback DJ Shockley. Glad you could join us tonight on this gorgeous, unbelievably night for uh, SEC football here in the Ozarks. And speaking of unbelievable, what a performance that Nick Starkle put on last week, especially in the fourth quarter when his team was tied 34 with Colorado State. He put on a show, and I guess that's what's gotten these fans excited, DJ. It's got yeah. his coach excited, who said it was the first time he's seen his offense look like he wants it to look. What does he mean by that? Well, they should be excited. I'm calling it the Starkle effect because of the what he does at the line of scrimmage and the threat that he brings to this team. And you talk about when you get one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, safety in the middle of the field, one of his big receivers on the outside, he's going to take a shot vertically. That is what he can bring to this offense and you look at all the press coverage the off coverage now look at the two safeties now you get a two high look and now you can run the football look at the safety's eyes both of them are really looking at the receivers eyes are not even on the run game anymore and you get that to happen rakeem boyd is the one who is the most happy in this scenario where nick starkle is forcing the ball down the field opens up the run game so many things they can do here with Nick Starkle at the helm now. Over 100 yards for Boyd, over 300 yards passing for Starkle. So offensively, they're in pretty good shape. Defensively, though, they've got to make some strides down the stretch. Yeah, it's all about the integrity of these defense. they got to keep it intact, they, which means missed tackles, keeping the edge. All those things have to be done tonight. They haven't done in the past couple weeks. they got to play better brand of football on that side. Well, I'll tell you what, wins have been hard to come by here the last year and a half, just four total wins. So when they get a win, they enjoy it. For more on that story, let's go down to Dawn Davenport. Well, Dave, what's the best way to enjoy a W in Arkansas? You pop on the shades and you join the dance party. That's exactly what the Razorbacks did in their locker room after last week's win. Check it out. Doors open immediately as they introduce Club Dub to the nation. It is legit, complete with a bouncer in a suit. I'm told your name has to be on the VIP list to get in and look at the atmosphere in Club Dub. You walk into confetti and strobe lights, music vibrating the walls. Everyone, including the head coach, showcasing some stellar dance move. Coach Morris told us, look, in all seriousness, wins have been hard to come by here. His kids deserve and need to celebrate them in a big way. He said, guys, longer Club Dub is open. The more it's open, the better his moves get. And we are underway as Arkansas wins the toss. They defer. San Jose State wants the football, and they will get it out at the 25-yard line. This is a San Jose State team that comes in 1-1. One and one. They had a week off to prepare for Arkansas, and they will turn to their fifth-year senior quarterback, Josh Love, who has put up some pretty good numbers this season, 60% passing, former walk-on. And he has to wait. He had to wait and wait and wait, but it's finally his show. Great opportunity for him on a primetime stage to show what he's about. Now, like zero interceptions, takes care of the football more than a game manager. Will have to make some plays tonight against his Arkansas defense for his team and his offense to play well. Started last year, but had to miss four games. Got beat up pretty uh, pretty badly as this San Jose State offensive line allowed 39 sacks and countless quarterback pressures. First play of the game, they're going up top. Has a man. It is caught. Billy Gaither. He stumbles around the 25-yard line, a 50-yard pickup, and Gaither, the senior, coming out on fire. Arkansas in the back end just got caught sleeping a little bit, looking in the backfield, and the safeties get beat deep on the first play of the ball game. I love what San Jose State did here to start the ball game. They go underneath, pass catch by Derek Deese, Jr., He'll be close to the first down, give him nine yards on that. And here's what happened here. They faked the bubble screen there, and then he comes down and just runs right through the safety, Joe Fuchsia there, and he gets behind him on the back end. You just cannot allow that to happen when you're the last line of defense. He'll come near side, Isaiah Hamilton, a redshirt freshman making the catch. And that'll be good enough for the first down. They will spot it inside the 15-yard line. So already three plays, and they're in the red zone. Yeah, Arkansas already on their heels, and San Jose State coming here with nothing to lose, letting it fly early, and you got a quarterback who takes care of the football.
toss sweep goes to Nick Nash, who's also their quarterback, who may have just put that on the turf. Looks like he may have fallen on top of the football. Arkansas saw, thought they might have had a chance to pick it up. But there's Nick Nash. We'll see him at quarterback some today. Just a super talented freshman at Irvine, California. Yeah, I think every team has a couple guys who you, it's a must you get the football to. Nick Nash is one of those players. On second down, inside handoff to John Packer. No gain on the play. So now it'll be third down. Sosa Aguim getting in there. The 300-pound defensive tackle was quiet last week, but, boy, he can be a disruptive force on that defensive line. Third down and two. I'll spread him out here. Love, pressure comes. Feels it, throws. Pass is caught around the three-yard line by Isaiah Hamilton. And that'll be good enough for the first down. It'll be first and goal from the three. Great job of Josh Love getting that football out of his hands. Arkansas goes cover zero blitz. Nobody man-to-man -man on the outside. Brought a couple edge pressures, and he gets rid of the football and converts the first down. Throws toward the end zone. Passes. Caught. Touchdown. Spartans. How about that opening drive? Seven plays. 75 yards. None comes up with the reception. Nothing but a double slant on the outside. Let's see if he actually catches this football all the way through. Looks like he got his arm underneath it. But a great job of Josh Love giving him a football he can go down and catch. Boy, Josh Love driving the team down the field, opening 50-yard strike to his senior receiver, Bailey Gaither. Love on that drive, five out of five, 67 yards. It's a good way to start a, a ball game. Uh, you can see the confidence they have in him already. So the point after attempt, Matt Mercurio will attempt it. The right-footed kicker will hammer it through the uprights. And this is how it all got started. Play number one, Josh Love to Gaither. And the guilty culprit is the safety here, but they want to fake a little toss here. He does a slight little roll here, but then the safety, Joe Fusha, gets caught looking in the backfield, and he gets caught in the background. You see there, he's still in his back pedal as the receiver's running by him and get caught flat-footed. And this is number double slant here. Good job of his eyes. And down in the red zone, near the goal line, throwing it low is a perfect place for a receiver to go down and get the football. That's a great job of execution there by the entire San Jose State offense. So that, that, that's a big drive to start the game. Jaquan Blackwell on that touchdown reception. Sorry about that. Gave it to Dunn. That was Blackwell, his first catch, touchdown catch of the year, his fifth catch of the season. Little pooch kick. Bobbled by Arkansas, but scooped up there, and Chase Harrell falls on it. So Nick Starkle will have to come in. This is very similar to what happened last week yeah. against Colorado State, who scored on the second play of the game. And now Nick Starkle and company come in, trailing 7 to nothing. but he marched him right down the field to tie it up. So his first start last week after transferring from Texas A&M. And, of course, underneath that jersey, <laughs> the Justin Bieber T-shirt. Dave, I saw you put the same shirt on before we started, so you guys are in the same company. Here's Rakeem Boyd, who had a nice afternoon last week running the football with 122 yards. His highest output is an Arkansas Razorback. His fifth 100-yard game for the Hawks. Boy, we, we just lit up when you start talking about what this offense 
can do for him in terms of throwing from sideline to sideline. High throw looking for Harrell. That's incomplete. There it is. He's not afraid. He is not afraid, is he? We, we talked probably the first 10 minutes of our meeting about this Justin Bieber lore that he has. And you see it's spread through some of the student sections, some of the fans. He's got Bieber fever now for sure. Third down. Call it five for this offense. Put together over 500 yards a week ago. Pass is deflected at the line. Boyd makes the catch, but no gain on the play. Fahuko, the defensive end, got his hand up in the air to deflect that. So now Arkansas will have to punt it away. Yeah, and I talked to the defensive coordinator, Derek Odom, for San Jose State before the ball game. He said, we have to mix up our looks versus Arkansas offense. And they did just that, bringing a corner cat off the left side of Starkle and having to get rid of the football, but playing zone on the other side. Good high kick. That will settle at the 15. 44-yard punt, no return. San Jose State, second possession coming up. The first one was highly successful. As your life grows, so do your needs. And with Bank of America and Merrill, the benefits you get can grow too. As a preferred rewards member, you can enjoy priority service and exclusive discounts. So your growing life can be more rewarding too. What would you like the power to do? These are my people. This is a land where my forefathers lie. These are my people. Mm -hmm. There is Brent Brennan, third season now as San Jose State's head football coach. Started his career as a player at UCLA. A little bit like Ralph Macchio out there <laughs> in Westwood. Of course, his first stint at San Jose State was an assistant coach for 2005 through 2010. Then was an assistant at Oregon State with Mike Riley. And then they called him back to San Jose State to take over this program. And an offensive-minded coach, obviously. Been a tough first two seasons. Went three and 22 those first two years. Started this season off with a win against Northern Colorado. Lost 34-16 at home to Tulsa two weeks ago. But fields are making their, those strides that you need to see as a coach. Make you feel like you're doing things the right way. It helps when you got a fifth-year senior quarterback, Josh Love, running the show. And Dave, he talked about what they had to do off the field. They had to stabilize this program just with some of the small things they do off the field to make them a better team on the field. Like you mentioned, having a Josh Love there, you see Brett in there, the things he's doing off the field, stabilize this program from just the training table stuff is what's making them better. They'll go underneath, and that one was dropped. They'll say incomplete. Trying to hit Billy Humphreys a tight end. Boy, Love on that opening drive was five out of five, 67 yards in that touchdown. One guy we didn't talk a lot about was Sosa Gee, right there in the middle of your screen, number three, defensive tackle. He can make a lot of things happen for you. Here he is right in the middle of the screen. He's a guy that moved from defensive end down to that defensive tackle spot. Bringing some extra rushers, and they get the pass away. They say it's caught around the 22, 23-yard line. Pick up a five. Trey Walker on that reception, but not good enough for the first down. So the Arkansas defense stands tall, enforcing a punt. Much better job of Arkansas being put a little bit closer to those receivers on those particular plays. No busted coverages on that particular play. You get off the field on. Three and out to give you offense a chance to get the football. Alex Gallon will punt it away. That will roll out of bounds around the 33-yard line. 
46 yard punt as we take a look at the road to the championship brought to you by Mercedes Benz and a busy day around the SEC. A lot of new kickoffs today involving some important games. And boy, Alabama and LSU look every part like teams that want a piece of that college football playoff. Florida just manhandled Tennessee 34 to 3, even forcing Coach Pruitt to a quarterback change. And Auburn on the road, huge win for the Tigers. That's the one that is going to be talked about the most is. Freshman quarterback Bo Nix going on the road, getting a big win in Texas a and where they have the 12th man that gets loud. And that's a huge signature win there for a freshman early in this season. First down and 10 for Arkansas. Had to punt it away on their opening possession. That pass is caught. That's Trey Knox. He'll pick up a dozen. Here comes this tempo from Arkansas. This is what Chad Moore wants to do. He wants to go faster. You can see Nick Starkle. The ball's out of his hands quicker. This is the style in which they want to play. Quick hitter pass caught that time by Tyson Morris, the sophomore. He picks up 15. Well, the two just quick slants with off coverage, and Starkle being accurate with the football. And now you think about, okay, here comes a run game. Now you see more coverage. Look at the more two high safeties now. Softer boxes want to keep things in front of them, expecting a run. Starkle going up top. Oh, that ball should have been picked off. Good coverage on the back end. Trey Knox, the intended target. Shelton running stride for stride with Knox. And what, he, what you like is he does a great job of turning at the line of scrimmage, and he's kind of playing press bail coverage, and Sheldon makes a good play on the football, but I know that's one he should have came down with. Second down and 10. They'll hand it off to Boyd. Breaks a tackle, and he's close to the first down. Should have the first down. It's a pickup of 10. Hey, what, Arkansas... You're not going to see old number 16 on the field today for the Hogs. The true freshman, outstanding wide receiver, Traylon Burks, a four-star recruit, number one player in the state. He is in concussion protocol. They think things are progressing to the point where he'll be available next week to practice and get ready for Texas A&M. But keeping him out today. Ooh, there's a big collision right around the 27-yard line. That is a big hit from Jesse Osuna. Yeah, Jesse's won there. Tougher plays and watch him come right here in the end and you get a little low high also with Ethan Aguayo who's their lead tackler. But Jesse coming in with a little pop there and I'm sure Rakeem will love that. He, he wants the football just as much as Stronger wants the ball in his hand. Second down. The 26 yard line. I go four wide receiver look with Boyd to the right of Nick Starkle. Three-man rush toward the end zone. A little bit high and behind Trey Knox. See Starkle a little high early in his ball game. Missed a couple guys that are, in his eyes, pretty much wide open. We had a chance to sit down and watch some film with him. And he, he is very critical of himself. And I know those two throws he had early in this game, he's going to be critical of as well. Here's a third down. This Arkansas offense, 38% conversion rate on the year. That is 80th in the country. Looking for Cheyenne O'Grady, and flags come in, being held by Trey Webb. Hewitt Owens, our referee today. Pass interference, defense number 23, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Shia O'Grady running this wheel route, and you see he gets a little hung up, he gets overrun a little bit and holds on to him. Trey Webb there, that's a big guy in a Cheyenne O'Grady trying to cover in space. That'll move the football inside the 15-yard line. Devil Whaley in the game at running back. He had a nice game last weekend. 
Rushing 81 yards on nine carries. Dancing around that line of scrimmage. Not a whole lot of room. He'll pick up a couple of yards. Ethan Aguayo. We'll say his name quite a bit tonight. The senior out of Mission Viejo, California. 34 tackles through two games. He is tops in the country, averaging 17 a start. And we watch him on film. He is sideline to sideline. He's a downhill. He's an athletic player. And averaging, like you said, 17 a game. He had 20 in the first game for Northern Colorado. 277 career total tackles. Second down. Stark will dumps it off, but it's tipped at the line and knocked to the turf. As Fajoko gets another one. Watch Fajoko at the end here. He knows that he can't get to the quarterback. He sees the eyes of Starkle, and he drifts towards the running back there and gets his hands up. Just what a heads-up play there. That's called instincts one-on-one there for a defensive lineman that just understands football and understands that if I can't get to the quarterback and I see the eyes of the quarterback, get in the passing lane and knock the football down. Liliami Fajoko. Coaches tell us he's a tremendous athlete on that edge. They block him up this time and get it to Whaley. He's tripped up inside the five. It's a gain of about six. Trey Webb coming up to make the play defensively. So now you're looking at fourth down. What does Chad Morris want to do here? They can get the first down. They can get it inside the two. Love to go for it right here. Your team needs some momentum, especially offensively. You haven't done anything really special. And it looks like we'll get a timeout here from San Jose State. First real big decision of the game coming from Chad Morris on the other side of this timeout. Wake up. There's a lot that needs to get done today. Small things, big things, too hard to do alone things. Day after day, you need to get it all done. And here to listen and help you through it all is Bank of America. With the expertise and know-how you need to reach that blissful state of doneness. So let's get after it. What would you like the power to do? It can seem unreachable at first. The bar too high. Shoes too big. You'll take leaps of faith and fall on your face but you'll get up. Hard work is 50 sprints before breakfast and another 50 for breakfast. You'll eat it, breathe it, sleep it. The Goodyear blimp doesn't show up for just anybody. So don't be just anybody. Be limp worthy. Goodyear, more driven. Saturdays in the South is our eight part documentary that chronicles the history of SEC football. Tuesday at nine Eastern, Part four takes you into the 1970s for a look at Bear Bryant's recommitment to the wishbone offense at Bama, plus the role sports on TV played in the SEC, led by the voice of college football, Keith Jackson. You can only see it Saturdays in the South right here on this very network, the SEC network, and of course on the ESPN app. Tenth play of this drive. It is a fourth down. They need a couple of yards to pick up the first down just inside the five. Inside handoff goes to Whaley and no room to run. Actually, a loss of a yard. Christian Johnson led the way for the Spartans. Chalk one up for San Jose State. And look at the penetration. Look how many red jerseys are going backwards. And how many white jerseys are on the other side of the line of scrimmage. This is a big focus for Arkansas this week. And you see Christian Johnson getting there, but... Look at all the white jersey on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Getting push up front for Arkansas is concern number one. A couple of issues on an offensive line, starting with the fact that their left tackle, Colton Jackson, has an injured foot. He's in a boot on the sidelines. He's not playing, so the J.C. transfer, Myron Cunningham, moving up to that left tackle spot. Quick slant pass is caught. Trey Walker, and he'll get it. Out near the 20-yard line, they'll spot it back at the 18, actually. Pick up a 13. Josh Love does a great job of just seeing the best matchup. You got off coverage on the outside, and he's delivering the football. He's throwing with confidence. This environment is not 
uncomfortable for him at all. First down at 10. Hawks bringing five. San Jose State sees it. It's Isaiah holding us all the way down the sideline. That's a pickup of 32 yards. Pressure comes off this right edge, but there is a bust in the coverage. Nobody is out in the flat. Inside, you get caught up from the crossing routes, and what a huge gain there. And Josh Love, this is this is concerning if you're Arkansas. What's going on here? A lot of guys running free in on this, in this defense. That goes to Holiness again. He'll pick up a couple of yards. He'll say that the runner was down, so no fumble. And this is kind of what we talked about in the open. The integrity of this defense has to be better. We've seen a couple big plays, just blown coverages by Arkansas on the defense side of the ball. That's got to be sure up. Love throws on the run, incomplete. It'll be third down. Let's go down to Dawn. Hey, guys, this defense is on a short lease. Defensive coordinator John Chavis moved down to the sidelines from the booth at the very end of last season. He is making the most of that move, told his guys after the first possession, loudly and passionately, do your job or I'll put someone in who will do their job. I'm tired of seeing this. Pretty simple message. Yeah. See if they can do it here on third down. Let's call it eight. Looks like Arkansas is in two-man coverage here, two safeties deep, and every guy has a man. But you wonder what the check right there does Arkansas check as well. Play clock down to one. Ooh, the flag came out. I saw the San Jose State coaches trying to get the timeout. Brent Brennan trying to get his team situated. Big third down when we come back. These are my people. This is the land where my forefathers lie. These are my people. Mm -hmm. ESPN celebrating 150 years of college football. Speaking of 150 years, San Jose State doing something perhaps they've never done before, and that's where an entirely white uniform from head to toe. We, get, we went back, and we can go back to at least 1950. <laughs> but it's hard with the black and white pictures to know if they ever wore the all white. But we know it's in the modern a, day. It's a clean look, though. It is. It is a good look. Third down. Josh Love passes caught. Big hole in the middle of that defense as Walker will pick up the first down around the 32-yard line. We've talked about a couple of injuries offensively. How about for the secondary of Arkansas? Monteric busts to Brown. Has a strained leg muscle. He's not playing today. So Ladarius Bishop gets the start at the corner spot. Yeah, gets his first start. Had a scoop and score last week versus Colorado State. Pass is caught. Throwing it around the infield a little bit. Foley with the reception. None with the throw. A gain of 15. Did Alecki know this? Five in the backfield of the offense. Five yard penalty. We play first down. Well, you only get a few opportunities to make those work, right? That's exactly what I was thinking. Just a wasted play right there. You got a perfect call, the double pass on. Pick up positive yards and you don't line up right. So those are the wasted plays when you go back and watch this game on Sunday. If it doesn't turn out the way you want to, those are the wasted plays you go back and think about what if. Humphreys with a check in. Tied in for San Jose State on a first and 15. Josh Love, 9 of 11, 130 yards and a touchdown to start this game. This is his 17th career start. 
Flag is down again. Nice driving run from Dijon Packer, the senior out of San Jose. We'll pick up ten. Ooh. Five players in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. Five-yard penalty. Replay first down. And these are the self-inflicted penalties that hurt you. You're driving the football. You got Arkansas on their toes, a big, huge conversion. Now you get two penalties that take you all the way back close to midfield now. And now it's an uphill battle. They got to get seven guys on the line of scrimmage on this play. <laughs> I'd hate to be the guy who's not lined right. up correctly. Looks like they finally got seven guys on the line of scrimmage now. So First down and 20. Love going up top into double coverage, overthrows everybody, trying to hit Bailey Gaither. Gaither had been bothered with an injury last year towards Achilles against Hawaii. He's having a sensational season. When he's healthy, very talented. Yeah, he is. He's one of the guys that has a really good rapport with Josh Love, and you can see the confidence he has in throwing it to him in double coverage right there. He was averaging 10 and a half yards of reception. So now second down and 20. Holiness goes in motion, makes the reception. He'll be stopped at the 40-yard line. A gain of only three. So it'll be third down and a, a long way to go. Third down, call it 17. Josh Love has to be really careful with the football here. You're in kind of no man's land here on third down and long. But you pick up 10, 15 yards maybe here, 10 yards at the most. will be good to get yourself in field goal range. Four-man rush. Love near side. The pass is caught by Lyles, and he'll be pushed out of bounds inside the 30. But shy of the first down give him 11 so it'll be five and a half maybe six yards from the line to gain excuse me hamilton on that catch yeah arkansas decided to play coverage there so only three guys rushing gave josh love a lot of time to see the field there and they did a good job of getting an easy completion giving themselves a manageable field goal spot here matt mercurio Made a 22-yarder against Tulsa a couple of weeks ago, but missed from 42 in the opener. A redshirt freshman from 45 yards out. And that one is no good. He will miss it off to the right. So 2.25 to go in the opening frame. San Jose State still leads it by a touchdown. It's game day. All you should be worried about is the score, because we've got the food covered. With fresh, never ever frozen chicken fingers, craveable cane sauce, crispy crinkle cut fries, and jugs of freshly made tea and lemonade. Raising Cane's chicken fingers, one love. Well, Nick Starkle, four out of eight to start this one. Began his collegiate career at Texas A&M, committed in January of 2016. Got some early playing time. Started the final six games as a redshirt freshman. Threw for 499 yards in the belt ball, but lost the starting job to Kellen Mond. He was telling us a couple weeks ago how tough that was to deal with. Felt like that was his job. Didn't get it. Sat through last season. Graduated in three years. Kudos to him for stepping on the gas in the classroom. <laughs> Gave himself an opportunity to transfer here and has two years of eligibility remaining. That pass was intended for Mike Woods, batted in the air, and that could have been picked off. But not a clean start right now for Nick Starkle in this Arkansas offense. Yeah, they struggle a little bit. Just They don't seem to be on the same page as we saw last week coming out firing on all cylinders. There's been some high passes. There have been some guys not coming out of the breaks, some guys not running full speed, and then getting stuffed down there on fourth down. This offense has to pick it up. Only 50 yards of offense for the Hawks. Four-man rush. They will get it to Knox. Breaks a couple of tackles. He'll get it to the 45 and drag to the turf there. A 17-yard pickup, and you can move the chains. Well, you love the call by Joe Craddock there. Does a great job. It's 
offense isn't flowing as you wanted to. You get them a nice, quick, easy completion. Now you're off and running. Keen boy. He'll pick up four. Nice and Parker making the tackle. Talking to Joe Craddock, the offensive coordinator before the game today. You know, we're telling him we were here last week talking about how good his offense looked, and he just had that look, man, like, I just hope we can do it again. <laughs> you know, these coaches are something else. Uh, flag comes in on the run by Boyd. He has plenty of yardage for the first down inside the 40. Looks like that one might be coming back. Holding offense number 85. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Second down. You know, Rock, Rakeem Boyd, we had a chance to visit with him and Nick Starkle. They came into Texas A&M together the same year. They didn't know each other very well in high school and knew of each other, but they developed a, uh, a friendship that eventually led him to this spot. As a matter of fact, Nick Starkle said he was in communication with Rakeem when he was thinking about transferring. Rakeem kind of got it all set up. And uh, you could see how much those two enjoy each other's companies when we, when we were visiting with them yesterday. Yeah, Dave, we didn't realize that Rakeem Boyd's more than a running back. He's a recruit coordinator as well. <laughs> That's right. Call, call Sarkle, wanted to get him there, and told him, hey, exactly, this is what we got. We got a quarterback here in Ben Hicks. But he said, frankly, I see you play. I know you got skills. You can play in this offense. And you can see now where they are now, four games in and side by side. Tosses it up, has a man, it's caught by Woods. That'll go to the house. 62 yards. First touchdown. Reception of the year for Mike Woods, the sophomore to Magnolia, Texas. Well, that was a dime from Nick Starkle now. Connor Limpert to attempt this point after, and he'll split the uprights. Just watch, you get nothing but a simple, nice little post route from the inside as safety gets caught inside. And you can see Starkle climb up in the pocket. And now you get a chance to throw this football over the top exactly what you want. Runs right by Ooh. Zamora Ziegler and just a dime here. And look at the post. Route. Stems him outside and it crosses his face. Does a great job of Starkle keeping that football up the hash. And then you see the speed of Woods. Those are the big plays and the ability to stretch the field that Arkansas has been missing early in this season. Now you got it with Nick Starkle and these plethora of receivers he has on the outside. 14th catch of the year for Woods. Last year only had 18 total. Had a career high six against Ole Miss. In week two in that 31-17 loss. But without Traylon Burks today, Mike Woods and Trey Knox become much more valuable. Yeah, they got some young receivers between Trey Knox and Traylon Burks and Mike Woods all freshman is a sophomore they're going to be dangerous to deal with that'll be a touchback hey this season for every field goal and extra point made by participating universities all state will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund thank you all state good look at reynolds razorback stadium on a gorgeous night here in the heart of the ozarks This is a team that's matched last year's win total with two. And listen, this is an important game. Yeah. Chad Morris talked about this two-game stretch with Colorado State, San Jose State, how important it was because it gets so difficult the road ahead, beginning with Texas A&M next week. And he wants to be clicking you need offensively. You need that momentum. It's, he talked about, Don talked about the wins are – very scared, but when you get them, you got to be happy about them, but you got to get momentum going into those those games. Tyler Nevins and Tayo Soli with the tackle. Gain of two on the play. 
The number one goal for San Jose State on offense is to be good on first and second down. Because you allow this pressure, you, you allow just John Chavis' defense to blitz and come after you, you get in third long, you get in trouble. Second down, Love going up top. Again, double coverage, and that one is picked off on the back end by Cameron Curl. His second interception of the season. Well, you can see why John Chavis, defensive coordinator, loves Cameron Curl, why he has to be on the field for him. The way he tracks this football in the air is a thing of beauty. He's, he's just playing the little high hole over here and does a great job of going and get the football. They say defensive backs usually don't have good hands, but watch him track his football over the shoulder, secure it, and give his offense another possession. Just a big-time play for this defense to get their offense to football. Boy, Cam Curl has been a man in that secondary. Had nine tackles last week, which matched his career high. Overall this year, 23 tackles, couple of interceptions, a forced fumble. Of course, the fumble recovery returned for a touchdown against the Rebels, 69 yards. Now they'll give it to Boyd. Boy, it looked like a hole was there for a moment. Just couldn't get there in time as it closed up, but still a gain of five. Jesse Osuna making the stop for the Spartans. Yeah, they'll take that every time on first down. Five yards, positive run. And you see more perimeter runs than running on the inside where they were stuffed earlier. Woods makes the catch. That'll be a first down. Gain of six on the play. Shelton on the coverage. We've seen Starko do more of this over the past couple weeks. The RPO game, everybody has heard of the run pass option. And he said he loved being in this offense. It gives him a lot of freedom at the line of scrimmage. If he sees stuff he likes, he's able to throw it or he's able to hand it off to a really good back at Rakeem Boyd. Fifth touchdown pass of the season by Nick Starkville ties this game up at seven. He's glad to have the job. Now he just wants to lead him to victory. Back in a moment. It's game day. All you should be worried about is the score because we've got the food covered with fresh, never ever frozen chicken fingers, craveable cane sauce, crispy crinkle cut fries, and jugs of freshly made tea and lemonade. Raisin Cane's Chicken Fingers, one love. It's an SEC Saturday night here in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Dave Neal, DJ Shockley, Don Davenport, glad you could join us. Nick Starkle trying to get it cranked up offensively. A little sluggish out of the gates. Last possession resulted in a game-tying touchdown pass to Mike Woods. As we begin the second quarter, Starkle steps up in the pocket again over the middle. This one's picked off. He was looking for O'Grady, picked off by Aguayo. Aguayo to the 30, cuts it back in his... Lost the football, but it's out of bounds. Boyd with a good tackle, but the interception sticks. 34 yards on the return by Ethan Aguayo. Just bad here by Nick Starker. He doesn't see the under, underneath defender floating right underneath him, and he looks up the route, and he just forces the football. I don't know if he didn't see Aguayo sitting there, but just underneath coverage, he has to recognize his zone coverage. They brought a little blitz off his right side, but just not identifying the underneath coverage hurts Nick Starko there and gives San Jose State perfect field position. DJ, sometimes you see these routes run right behind the umpire, right? Yeah. Using him kind of as a pick tool. I wonder just then, because it was down the middle, Did you, sometimes do you lose guys behind the umpire? Well, this, well, Guaya was kind of underneath the umpire there, and he, he just didn't see him, because I think he was following the guy who was in zone across from him. Starko got to do a better job of seeing the field. Nick Nash comes in a quarterback. They will flip it back to Hamilton. He will get it inside the 20, down to around the 15. That's a first down after a 12-yard pickup. Well, they're doing some different things with old Nick Nash at quarterback. Yeah, we, we've seen a little bit of everything already, and we see San Jose State going with tempo here, trying to get going, trying to catch Arkansas on the same front and style. Nick Nash, the team's leading rusher. He will keep it here. Boy, look at him dance around and finds the end zone. 15 yards for the true freshman out of Irvine, California. His second rushing touchdown of his young career. 
We talked about seeing Nick Nash in his ball game, and I know Arkansas turned on the tape and saw he was their leading rusher on offense. So you know when he comes in the ball game, what's going to happen? Uh, just some nifty running there from Nick Nash to make a couple guys miss. And you can see why they got to get this freshman on the field because of his ability, and he's making it, he's making it go early. 20-yard touchdown run last week against Tulsa. He's had runs of 49 and 42 already. And you can tack that 15-yarder onto his ledger as well. Point after is up and good. Nick Nash, the early enrollee, takes him to the end zone. But it all got started right here on a bad throw from Nick Starkle. Yeah, we always see it. We, we, sometimes you question, you're throwing the football into coverage like that, and Starkle, sometimes his arm is feeling really good. He thinks he can fit it into certain spots. And then you get the interception, you come right back. Sometimes you say, take a shot. This is just as good as taking a shot. The trick play here coming around. Nick Nash in the ball game making a just a great play here. And watch the nifty running by Nash here. Watch this cut here. That's cutting on the dime and leaving a little bit of change there. Left bumper pool looking for his shoelaces. Well, he enrolled back in January, so he had spring practice, and that's when the coaches said, we're going to find a way. We are going to find a way to get him on the field. And so Guayo sets up the youngster for the touchdown run. And, you know, each week, a little bit more in his, in his yeah. arsenal, right? No doubt about it. And doing it on this stage, it just shows they can trust him. And this play will continue to get more and more things on it as this season goes on, but they know they can depend on it. Devion Warren will return the kick for Arkansas. Chris Wood will kick it away for the Spartans, who lead it by a touchdown here early in the second quarter. And it's returnable by Warren. Wrapped up around the 22-yard line. Don't forget Marty and McGee coming your way Wednesday, 7 o'clock Eastern time, 6 Central, right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. You can never get enough of those guys. No telling what will be the topic of discussion on Wednesday. You know, you know they have a plan, but then that plan is, is, is throw it away. Throw it away after like two minutes. They got their own thing going. I never see Marty with a script. So I don't know if anything's ever on script, <laughs> yeah. but it's always yeah. fun to watch them. Yes. <laughs> those two boys are something else. All right. Arkansas down a touchdown. They had really one good drive so far tonight. I'll start with the handoff. That goes to Whaley. He'll pick up four and a half, maybe five. Devil coming into last week was a guy that had fumbled a few times, put the ball on the turf. Coach kind of was like, yeah, I don't know how much more I can, you know, I can't afford the guy's fumble, turn the football <laughs> over. But he gave him a shot last week, and Devwa didn't disappoint his coach. I remember you asking him, who, who's the more confident one? Is it to be him or you? He definitely was coach. <laughs> Come near side. Woods picks it out of midair, and that'll be good enough for the first down. Do right where the line to gain was. Seven-yard pickup. And that'll move the chains. Yeah, this is a spot in the ball game where Nick has just to calm down. I love the confidence they throw in it again after the interception. Boy, another big hit coming from San Jose State. Kyle Harmon, one of those inside backers, getting his nose in there. Three stops for Harmon already tonight. We talked about the ability for this defense to play well on first and second down. Arkansas, on the other hand, has to do the same. Forcing themselves into a second and long now, not where they want to be. Four-man rush. They'll swing it out to Whaley. Tries to cut it back, but good defensive work by the Spartans. A gain of only two as Nehemiah Shelton trips him up. Now it's third down and about eight. That's what you want to see is guys rallying into the football. Stark did a great job of checking it down, but you want to see him make a guy miss. But no, Sheldon does a great job on the outside of that open field tackle versus a very dangerous person in space. Arkansas 0 for 2 on third downs tonight. Stark 
Starkel slides to his left. That pass is caught by O'Grady. Got right in front of the defender, Brandon Ezell. He'll pick up nine, and that'll move the chains. I was wondering when they were going to get 85 involved. Nice job of Cheyenne there using his body. 6'4", 256, running the comeback ride. You don't see most tight ends running a 16 back to 14 comeback on the outside, but this guy is so athletic, he can do it in multiple ways of getting open. Good play fake by Starkle. Buys himself some time, and then he'll try to run for it. He gets it to midfield into... San Jose State territory after an eight-yard scamper. Kyle Harmon will get credit for the for the tackle. And you can see the emphasis for Nick Starkle making better decisions on his drive. Nobody was open on that bootleg. Now you pick up eight yards of positive yardage to keep yourself on schedule. Boy, run game having a tough time this evening. No gain on that carry by. Whaley, just not the type of holes we saw last week against Colorado State. They're not getting any push up front. I mean, that time it was just three down front for San Jose State. Looked like we got a flag on the other side. But this Arkansas office line has to get more push than they're getting right now. Sideline warning, San Jose State. It's the first warning. So now it's third down and a couple. I expect this football to be in the hands of Nick Starkle to make a good decision with it. You haven't really ran the ball up the middle well. Maybe something to the edge on the perimeter. But you got very loose coverage down here at the bottom with a big receiver. They'll go handoff. Whaley makes a man miss, and he'll have the first down at the 47. Give him four. But again, having to dodge a guy in the backfield. I'm thinking the exact same thing. Even though you run the football and you pick up the first down, well, he does a great job of making a guy miss right in the middle of the, the screen, but this is an offensive line that needs to improve. Good run by Whaley there to pick up the first down. I hear coaches talk about sometimes these running backs, they got to bring their own blocker. Yeah. <laughs> you expect him to make one guy miss, but now we get the point of attack there for one yard. So, boy, back in the game now on a first down and 10. Starkle bobbled and dropped by Cheyenne O'Grady as he hears it from Jesse Osuna. The senior outside backer chasing down Cheyenne O'Grady. Osuna's a guy that had 93 stops last year. That was second best on the team. Played a lot of football for the Spartans. San Jose State's doing a real good job of mixing up the coverages. I've seen a lot more man coverage in this ball game than I thought. They feel they match up well. It looks like they're in man coverage again. The second and long here, expect some pressure. Warren makes the catch. Stays on his feet, still dancing around. He's down to the 31-yard line. Gain of 15. Good work by Devion Warren. One thing that Coach Moore said that about Warren is he is good in space, and you can see it right here. They can guys miss. He probably made four or five guys miss on this particular play. He is just slippery when he's out in space like that. Another fresh set of downs as the ball will sit at the 32. Warren goes in motion. High snap. They will give it to Boyd. He'll cut it back inside the 25, down to the 23, gain of eight. Nice job by Arkansas, by formation and motion, getting the edge to give Boyd the perimeter run there and creating an explosive play there, pick up eight yards. He'll play fake to Boyd. That one should have been picked off. Well, he's trying to throw it in these little windows that just aren't there. And here's the thing that I'm noticing. Sounds like State's playing with confidence. Watch him sit on this route. Shelton just sits there on that hitch route, and there's nothing there. That's a ball he should throw over his head or go somewhere else with the football, but Shelton was all over that route and almost came up with another big interception. Four passes broken up by this San Jose State, San Jose State defense. 
And again, another third down coming up. Third down and two. Boyd hit in the backfield, and he'll be a yard shy. Jay Leonard comes up to make the play. Only a yard for Rakeem Boyd. So now it'll be fourth down and about a yard, maybe a yard and a half. Penetration is key on short yardage plays. And right now, San Jose State is winning that matchup at the line of scrimmage, especially on inside runs. They've already stopped them one time on fourth down, and they get another big stop. Boy tried to quarterback sneak it. I don't know if he got it. Depends on which guy they give the spot to. 6-3 frame trying to fall forward. Let's see where he finally ended up. And Hubert Owen says he's going to have to stop the clock and bring the chains in. That looks close. You can't see him in that mass of bodies right there, so it's all about the spot here. It's going to be so close. They don't get it. San Jose State stops Arkansas on wow. fourth down and a yard. They will get the football at the 20. Three-yard line, 8:21 to go here in the second quarter, and the Spartans leading it by a touchdown. Wow! Timeout on the field. Back to Fayetteville after this. It can seem unreachable at first. The bar too high, shoes too big. You'll take leaps of faith and fall on your face, but you'll get up. Hard work is 50 sprints before breakfast and another 50 for breakfast. You'll eat it, breathe it, sleep it. The Goodyear blimp doesn't show up for just anybody. So don't be just anybody. Be blimp worthy. Goodyear, more driven. Welcome back to Fayetteville after just two wins last year. Chad Morris sent a message to his team this offseason. No amenities, no fancy locker room, no gear. He stripped the entire program, coaches included, of anything with the Arkansas logo on it. Check out what they worked out in instead. Just simple cotton t-shirts. You see the word every written in Sharpie across the front of it. The premise of that is that they had to earn everything. There was no entitlement here. The players were then given a chance to earn back every piece of gear piece by piece. Guys, uh, the, what are you seeing out of his team right now? He might want to uh, strip gear again. But he said he really felt that it helped this team from a mental standpoint. Rakeem Boyd told us yesterday that he felt like it reminded everyone of why they are here. Well, they need to get refocused the way they have started this game. Love going up top. That one almost picked off. Nick Nash sent him down the sideline trying to catch a pass. Not only can he throw it, he can run it. We're trying to get him in space. When you have a guy of his caliber, you find any way possible to get the ball in his hands. We've seen already in this ball game what he can do with the football in his hands and almost caught Hayden, Hayden Henry there on the wheel route. Hayden Henry did a good job of getting his head around. Nash rushed for 1,200 yards and 17 touchdowns, threw for 1,700 yards and another 18 touchdowns as a high school senior. Three-man rush. Quick hitter pass is caught. That'll be a first down for the Spartans again into Arkansas territory after a 15-yard pickup by Walker. Boy, Josh Love <laughs> just looking sharp. 12 of 16, 160 yards. Yeah, Trey Walker right there. Another guy who we talked about has, has pure confidence in his quarterback. And Josh Love has the same confidence in him. And you can see him. He's sitting back there nice and calm and collected inside the pocket, delivering some dives to his receivers. First down and 10. 
Oh, a little flea flicker. Back to Love. He's going up top. Good coverage on the back end by Arkansas. And there's a flag that comes in. Trey Walker was the intended receiver, covered by Miles Mason. We've seen a gamut of stuff from this San Jose State offense. Has an affairs. Defense, number 18. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And you see the flea fickler here. And they played it pretty well. Arkansas did not fall for it. Had a guy there. And you can see Trey Walker arguing for the foul. I would leave that alone, Dave. I don't yeah, see much I, there. Both guys fighting. Both guys hand fighting with each other. I didn't see much there for the penalty. Arkansas is going to have to live with it as the ball is pushed inside the 35 down to the 33-yard line. It'll be first down and 10. Josh Love, the fifth-year senior quarterback. Eight starts last year, five starts back in 2017. And it started every game this year. Gets it near side to Isaiah Holiness, the true freshman. He just kind of popped onto the scene. Hadn't seen him the first couple of games for San Jose State, but he has definitely been involved in the game plan here in Arkansas. They brought all hands on deck here. And one thing to notice is Josh Lowe hasn't been hit a lot. This football is out of his hands, and he's had a pretty clean pocket for majority of his first half. Here goes Packer to the near sidelines. No gain on the play as Ladarius Bishop comes up to run him out of bounds. This is a San Jose State team that scored 35 in their opener, but only 16 against Tulsa two weeks ago. They had an off week last weekend, but moved the ball up and down the field, just couldn't get any points out of it. Kind of shot themselves in the foot, according to Coach Brennan, and need to clean things up, and felt like they had to play near flawless here. It looks similar to the game plan today. They moved the football a little bit down the field. This may be four down territory with how he missed the field goal last drive. Arkansas bringing the heat. Love, his pass, batted around, incomplete. He was looking for Isaiah Hamilton. Jarquez McClellan in the back end bats it away. Great job, McKillen, coming there with that right hand. Look at that right hand come right in there at the end. Doesn't interfere with the receiver. Textbook play from McLean there to get that football out and force this field goal. Mercurio to attempt the field goal miss from 46 earlier today. This is a 47 yarder. Coach says he'll stretch him out to 50. That's about it. So he is close to his range here. Good clean snap. The kick is on the way and it sneaks in the goal post. That thing was moving like a knuckleball. <laughs> yeah. It broke the right way at the right time. And San Jose State leads it by 10. It all comes down to a single defining moment. When a plan stops being a plan and get set into motion. Today's Merrill can help you get there with the people, tools, and personalized advice to help turn your ambitions into action. What would you like the power to do? It can seem unreachable at first. The bar too high, shoes too big. You'll take leaps of faith and fall on your face but you'll get up. Hard work is 50 sprints before breakfast and another 54 breakfast. You'll eat it, breathe it, sleep it. The Goodyear blimp doesn't show up for just anybody. So don't be just anybody. Be limp worthy. Goodyear, more driven. SEC Saturday night from the Ozarks in Northwest Arkansas where San Jose State has taken a 10-point lead three of those points coming off the foot 
of Matt Mercurio. 47 yard field goal and Coach Brent Brennan loving it. Up 10 on the road. <laughs> 6.09 to go in the second quarter. The longer this thing plays like this, I mean, with each snap, San Jose State gaining some confidence. Warren, he's out to the 25 and tripped up there. And well, you can see San Jose State just kind of flying around now. Yeah, the energy is different on that side of the field. Those guys in the white jerseys believe. They've come in here and they have completely dominated this first half here on both sides of the ball. Offensively been able to move the football. Defensively have gotten an interception. They got their hands on another one. Defensively, you know, I think is where this game is changing because they are playing tight man coverage. They're not afraid to come after Nick Starkle. Arkansas has had two failed drives that ended on fourth down conversions that went awry for the Hogs. And on those two drives, they racked up 24 plays, 118 yards, and got nothing to show for. That one's behind Mike Woods. There it is. Two drives here in the first half have ended. One of them on the five-yard line, the other one on the 23-yard line. And listen, I mean, San Jose State, if you've got to sum this up in a nutshell here, they've won the offensive line and the deep. They've won the line of scrimmage both ways so far. And in the SEC, we know that's where games are won and lost. And right now, San Jose State has been the more physical team up front. Whaley runs into the arms of Aguayo. Fifty one yards on the ground for the Hawks. Here comes another third down here where Arkansas needs something good to happen. They need to pick up a couple first downs here as the second quarter starts to wind down and he's got to find a a safety bow. Where's Cheyenne O'Grady? Cheyenne O'Grady's right here in the slot here. See if he finds his more dependable player. That's batted in the air and tipped around and it falls to the turf and now it's fourth down and six. Looking for TQ Jackson, another one of those talented true freshmen. But you can see Nick Starkle just shaking his head. Yeah, look, I mean, just look at the penetration there. Getting into the face of Nick Starkle there. You see he gets his hand on it. And you see right here, TQ Jackson turns into a defensive back here, trying to make sure the ball doesn't get intercepted. Sam Lloyd to punt it away. Sam averaging 38 yards per punt this year. Gets this one off. It's a good, high, tight spiral. Zell, fair catch back at the 20-yard line. A 49-yard punt. But Nick Starkle, after such a fantastic performance a week ago, it has been a 180 here tonight. They just can't seem to get it going offensively. They trail by 10. These are my people. This is the land where my forefathers lie. These are my people. Mm -hmm. Our first instant gym of the night. How about Nick Nash? 15 yards and the touchdown for San Jose State. Nasty. I mean, that's just. <laughs> whoop. Call it out in. Bumper pool is now on a. Instant Jeff. Boy, he just put that right foot in the turf and said, not today. Mm, that was nasty. Guy's just a true freshman. And I'll tell you what, Nash is a big dude too now. He's about 6'2, 185. He hadn't even started to get in the weight room yet. We'll go inside handoff. Smith the first one there. Along with Soley. You see a lot of runs to the left side of this offensive line for San Jose State with Troy Kowalski and Jack Snyder. The most experienced part of the offensive line. We've seen a lot of runs go to that side of the field tonight.
Love to throw over the middle. That'll be a reception and a first down at the 36 yard line. That one goes to Trey Walker again. Walker, the junior out of Inglewood, California. Led the team with 714 receiving yards a year ago, averaged 18.3 yards a catch. He is a big play waiting to happen. Matter of fact, he went over 200 yards in receiving yards against Utah State a year ago. Love will throw it again. Going up top. Trying to hit the aforementioned Trey Walker, no flags. Watch this pocket here. Watch how clean it is. Look at it, just, just stalemate up front. No penetration by Arkansas. One guy really getting in the middle, but the ball's already out. He's got time to survey the field. He looked both sides of the field there. We see he got a cramp, looks like, on the back end back there. It's McLean on the back end, who had a good play last drive. But Arkansas defense up front. Not affecting Josh Love at all. Jarquez McClellan had his first pick in the opener against Portland State. He's down back in a moment. These are my people. This is a land where my forefathers lie. These are my people. Mm -hmm. All new season of Fansville by Dr. Pepper. There's a storm coming. Did you hear that? Someone's in the house. All of our Dr. Pepper's gone. Hey, you got the wrong fan! Oh, are you seeing another grill? It's just a snack. That's it, Crow. <laughs> These turnovers are killing us! Your husband's gone. For the season? I'm transferring to tech. Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. About time you showed up. Yeah, Dari, we're watching it. I mean, it's clear as day. They are having some problems. And look at that jersey from Josh Love. I think that's a little too clean for a guy that's thrown it 22 <laughs> times. It's got on all white, not dirt stain on it. They step back and throw again. That one's batted away at the last moment by Cameron Curl. Nice play from the safety to get his hand in there. That's the effort you like. And this defense has to pick it up here. Now you got to pick up a. Third and long here for San Jose State. But they've been pretty good here on third down. You see two of five have completed some long ones. It'll be interesting to see if Arkansas plays zone or they come after Josh Love, but he's been good whenever they play zone coverage to find a hole in his defense. They'll go underneath with it. Asking Walker to dance around and make a play and make guys miss, and he's doing so, and he's got some room to run. He'll have the first down at the Arkansas 45. How in the world did he escape all those Arkansas jerseys? A gain of 20. We came on talking about the integrity of this defense. Nothing but a shallow cross. This is exactly what you want. Catch it for five or six yards and make a tackle. There's another missed tackle, and guys are just not tackling in space. The integrity of this defense is being challenged tonight, and it's kind of the same M.O. We'll go inside handoff to Dijon Packer. He'll get about a yard, yard and a half as we close in on three minutes to go in the opening half. They told us this guy Walker, he can make some plays, and he just made a huge one on third down and ten. You can see the speed of Walker there, cutting it all the way back across the field, coming up with a big play for his defense, for his offense. Arkansas did exactly what they wanted. Made him check it down. Just got to make the tackle. Six catches, 77 yards for Walker, who gets a little drink of water here on this drive. Second down and nine. Love, by the way, is now 16 of 24 for 208. He'll go handoff inside. Dejon Parker has the first down at the 29 of Arkansas. That's a 13 yard gain. Mm -hmm. 
You see John Parker, 223 pounds. Downhill, physical runner, ran through a tackle there about eight yards down the field. Picking up another first down. Tyler Nevins in the game at running back. Two minutes to go before halftime. Again, Arkansas had a chance to stop at the line of scrimmage, but Nevins will pick up two and a half, maybe three, on a second effort. And Dave, you can see the trend here. We're talking about it. Missed tackles at the point of attack. You got him there for maybe one or two yard gain. And he rolls off and picks up another two or three yards. I don't expect Chief to sit back. John Chavis, defensive coordinator, to play this zone coverage anymore. He's going to have to come after Josh Love. And those guys on the outside the corner is going to have to stand up. Clock ticking down to 115. San Jose State had to burn a couple of early timeouts, so they only have one remaining, but they may not need it. Holiness inside the 10 to the goal line. Touchdown, Spartans, 26 yards. Welcome to college football, Isaiah Holiness. You can see those San Jose State fans are happy they made this trip here as their offense is putting on a display right here against his Arkansas defense. And once again, another wide open receiver just running free into the secondary. And you get a guy like Holiness in space. He can smell that end zone. My goodness. Point after up and good. It is now 24 to 7. Shocking here. Let's see what's going on in Athens. Dari, give us an update. Wow. Well, John Chavis not happy with how this has transpired. Oh, my goodness. He cannot believe what is happening. And this is just eye discipline, doing a terrible job of understanding where the routes are happening. And you're looking in the backfield, you get lost right there. That's just a poor job. You can see guys just talking back and forth. And this is a shock for John Chavis, I know, but San Jose State, the confidence is growing. I mean, Dave, you gotta you, you look on that sideline, these guys believe it. They're playing with that type of energy. Short kick. Fair catch call for there. Well, while we have a break in the action, let's throw it to Laura Rutledge and our friends at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Academy Sports and Outdoors is making it even easier on you with in-store pickup. It's all new and basically means you go to academy.com, order whatever you need, and come get it in-store. Get in, get out, get back to having fun with your family. Thank you, Laura. Trying to have some fun here, but the only way Arkansas is going to have any fun is if, if they can put some points on the board. And you see the numbers there by Nick Starko. It's just total different what we saw from a week ago where he was lighting it up, throwing it all over the field, and you got to give San Jose State a lot of credit. They batted a lot of footballs down. They got an interception. They're mixing up their looks on the back end, and they're winning up front. That's the main difference in this ball game right now. 105 to go before halftime. Starkle to throw. Quick hitter to the near side. That one it is caught, but they'll be inbound, so the clock continues to move. Starkle again, right through the hands of Boy. That one came in there a little hot. It'll stop it at 41 seconds. Probably the biggest third down of this first half right here. First meeting between these two schools. Matter of fact, San Jose State hasn't won a road game since November of 16 when they beat Fresno State.
Pass is caught. That'll be good enough for the first down. We'll stop it to move the sticks. Gain a seven there. And then one thing San Jose State has done, they have taken this crowd completely out of this game. And the one thing that we saw out of Arkansas last week was some missed tackles from the defense side of the ball and some big plays. San Jose State has done a great job of tackling whenever they have caught the football. Not many yards after catch for Arkansas. All told, San Jose State has put up almost 300 yards of offense, 299 to 215. This is a team last year. Now, obviously, it's last year. Things changed a little bit, but they averaged 61 yards a game rushing. That was the last in Division I football in the FBS. They put up 65 here in the first half. They did throw it around. They trailed a lot of games, so they were forced to throw. They finished 32nd in the country, but they averaged just 21 points a game a year ago. It's been a rebuilding job for Brent Brennan as well as it has been for Chad Morse. Nick Starkle hit, stays on his feet, throws to O'Grady near side. Pass is caught. He'll get out of bounds at the 43. Gain of six. Clock is at 30 seconds. It's a great job of Nick Starkle of eluding a potential sack there. Myron Cunningham, number 76, the left tackle, gets beat around the edge. I think Starkle's big and strong and able to fight off that potential sack there to keep this clock going and possibly get some more points before half. Starkle stands in the pocket. Pass is caught around the 45. That'll be a first down. It'll stop the clock for a moment. 21 seconds. Couple of timeouts for Arkansas. Trey Knox with that reception. The San Jose State defense has played some strong physical football today. You're talking about not having much yards after contact. You see the line of scrimmage game. They have owned the line of scrimmage and then made some plays in the back end as well. You're talking about switching up the looks. They have done that. They played on the other side. You see the, the physical tackle, the confidence they're playing with in the secondary. And you see right in the middle there, defensive coordinator Derek Odom. He has his guys playing with some extreme confidence right now. Only allowing seven points to this high-powered Arkansas offense, which we saw last week put up tons of points in the game for Colorado State. Coach uh, Odom telling us that and he has a luxury. They have nine defensive linemen they can run in. He has three groups that he just shuffles, basically eats possession. So guys in the fourth quarter will be fresh, ready to go. And of course, their linebacking core led by Aguayo and Osuna, very talented as well. We've seen 11 and 31 make a bunch of plays. Starkle deep down the middle. That one is picked off. Another interception by San Jose State. Bobby Brown. Takes it out to midfield. His second interception of the season. A 29-yard return, and there's nine seconds to go before halftime. Yeah, this was a complete force by Nick Starkle. The ball was high. There's zone coverage around it. And he had to be a perfect throw to get this football in there. But you can see there's three, four guys around. And he tries to force this football into an area that, look how high this football is. There's no way his receiver could come down with it. The safety's playing outside the hash, and then he has underneath coverage as well. This was a complete force by Nick Starkle. He had to make a better decision with this football, especially if you're trying to go get points. Still had plenty of time, had a timeout on the board to get in the field goal range. Starkle, 15 of 27, 182, a touchdown, but two interceptions. Love with nine seconds. That pass is caught underneath. And that should run out the clock. Actually, they're going to take a timeout. Why not heave it one time in the end zone? Look at the excitement. These guys, you can't tell me these guys don't believe. They probably came into this game with a little doubt what they've done in the past, coming to an SEC venue. But you see the raw emotion of San Jose State. They feel like they belong here, and they truly do. Well, you see the blue line on the back of those helmets that all the players wear. It stands for execution and effort. It's kind of their mantra this year. 
where Coach Brennan says we need 100% effort 100% of the time. That's the blue line. They've gotten it today. Uh, both sides of the ball, special teams have done it. They have completely dominated Arkansas in all three phases in this first half. It's going to be a gut check time for Arkansas when they go in at halftime. And I would love to know what Coach Morris has to say to this ball club at halftime. So what a half for San Jose State. They put 24 on the board, over 300 yards of offense, and some boo birds coming out here in Fayetteville. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, you can watch the live performance of the Razor Band Marching Band on SEC Network Plus. Start streaming on the ESPN app. Boy, a disappointing 30 minutes for the Razorbacks, especially coming after a good win against Colorado last week. And let's go down to Dawn. What do you point out to your offense that was missing that half? Well, we got to finish drives. I mean, that's number one. We got to finish drives. We ain't been able to do that. Had two fourth down conversions we didn't capitalize on. Got to give them credit. They're playing our tail off right now. We got to make some plays. Now, defensively, they've been able to, to get it done in the air. What do you have to do to make their quarterback uncomfortable? Well, we got to put some pressure on him. I mean, he's staying back there entirely too calm, too consistent, get, just picking us apart. So we got to be, we got to be a little bit more pressure on this guy. Thank you, Coach. Well, not going to be a uh, fun locker room at intermission. Hopefully the guys in the studio will have much more fun. Let's go to them now. Dari, take it away. A state first ever meeting between these two clubs and after 30 minutes of football 24 7 Spartans out and in front and really DJ this is uh, not gone well in any aspect for no. Arkansas where do you begin when you begin to dissect the first half Dave I think it's pretty simple it's the fundamentals of blocking and tackling offensively you can't move anybody defensively you're missing tackling you talk about some of the explosive plays that they've had this is the first play of the ball game you allow a receiver to get behind you for a huge play, and it's kind of a collision of what happened. Nick Nash, the backup quarterback, comes in, puts bumper pool on skates, and gets into the end zone for another run. And then this is the part here that's baffling me. Guys are running free in their secondary, and this reaction by John Chavis here has not been good. Here's Cam Curl on the return. He'll get it out to the 25-yard line. Well, coming out of that locker room, Don had a chance to catch up with Coach Brent Brennan of San Jose State. What was his uh, topic of conversation? Well, a uh, message very clear. I will say this. He was subdued, not a whole lot of excitement, very monotone. He said he reminded his guys numerous times in that locker room, football is a four-quarter game. He was very happy with what he saw offensively. He said a big part of their success was their ability to keep their quarterback clean. they got to give him a chance to get the ball out quickly and marry up some of that with a run game to win this one. He said defensively, the pressure is what has allowed them to force some interceptions. He said they're going to continue to do that here in this half. This is a team that in the first two years under Coach Brennan, just 3-22. and 22. They're 1-1 one one to start this year. Nick Starkle in his second start for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Got off to a pretty good start, but uh, really two interceptions and two throws that you kind of left scratching your head a little bit. Yeah, a little dumbfounded by those, and he's got to play a better second half, but they got a chance. That pass is caught by Tyson Morris. That'll be a first down at the 38. Arkansas's last four drives, two interceptions, one out on downs, and then they had one three and out. Arkansas going a little tempo now on first down. Joaquin Boyd will take it to the 45-yard line, a gain of six. Rakeem coming off the game where he went over 120 yards last weekend against Colorado State, now 9 for 44. And here's what his offense, this is what it needs, some rhythm, needs some continuity. This offensive line has to move some guys. Back-to-back -back runs, that'll pick up a dozen yards total, and that'll be a first down. Boyd showing some emotion. 
Trey Webb tripped him up. There is a flag down though. I think this one may go San Jose State here. Dead ball, personal foul, late hit with targeting. Ooh. Defense, number 11, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Late hit, too. That's their outside backer, Jesse Osuda, who's been all over the field tonight. Yeah, it's kind of after the play, he's down. And you're going to see him come in late. Yeah, I think this is going to be overturned, Dave. I don't think you see he doesn't even make any contact with the. Ooh, there is a little bit of contact there now. That angle. Yeah, that angle shows a little bit different from that first angle. You know, those are so hard running, and that's a, you see Boyd right away. He knew it, but when runners are starting to go to the ground, defenders go low with them. Of course. Of course, they want guys to lead with that shoulder yeah. more than leading with the crown of that helmet. And we always talk about is he a defenseless player? Is he getting tackled going to the ground? Again, in, in, in targeting, when this goes back to uh, the replay booth, there is no stands. It's either overturned or confirmed. And this is confirmed. Losing Jesse Osuna would be would be big for this defense because he's the guy who's around that football a lot. The senior outside back. After review, the ruling of targeting is overturned. Number 11 remains in the game. But they will add the 15 for the late hit. I believe wasn't at the front end of the. And that's what I thought. Call. It, yeah. He's tapping his helmet there, but it looked like from that first view, I, I thought initially he came in with that shoulder, and the other angle looked like he got a piece of it, but not enough to overturn it. So they marked it off to the 33 and a half, 30, 33 yard line, and that is where Arkansas will have it first down and 10. Whaley in the backfield. Oh, roll Starkle out. He'll throw back and looking for Devwa. And San Jose State all over that. Yeah, I mean, not only was it good coverage, he had pressure in his face, so he wasn't able to see it as clearly as he wanted to. And look at the pressure come right at the end. He couldn't put enough on the football, could not step into it. Boy, you see that so often. A quarterback slams the back of his helmet on the turf after a hit. Been there. <laughs> oh, it's not a good feeling. Nick back up. On second down, we'll hand it off to Boyd. He'll try to cut it back inside, and three white jerseys there. Gain of two for Rakeem. Jay Leonard, the first one on the spot for the Spartans. And they just think about how many times have we seen tonight just free runs for this Arkansas offense. They haven't seen many. The D line of San Jose State has been really aggressive, and they've won in the battle up front. Big third down. Looks like looks like San Jose State is playing some sort of zone on the back end, but a lot of room on the outside to throw the football. Four-man rush. Stark will hit as he throws. It's high, and that one is picked off. Another interception. The third of the game by the Spartans. This time, it's Jay Leonard. Jay Leonard gets the interception, but credit that defensive line. For getting that pressure. You see the backup quarterback there, Ben Hicks, who actually started the season. But watch the pressure right as he's about to throw it. They run an ET stunt on the front, and right as he throws the football, he gets hit. Ball's a little high. We've seen that tonight. But just another costly error there for Nick Starkle in his Arkansas offense. And another drive. That is stopped the last five drives now. Three interceptions out on downs and a three and out. That'll get you beat most nights. Absolutely. Love will throw another 
pass completed to Trey Walker. That's a gain of 12, and Trey had one of those nights now. It's seven catches, 89 yards. Seven catches on eight targets. That's that's efficient as you want your top receiver and quarterback to be. And right now, one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside, and Josh Love is having a date. A fifth-year senior who actually walked on to this program. Arkansas tightening up the coverage now. On that. that one a little bit late behind is tied in. Derek Deese. Well, Josh Love is a guy that played a handful of high schools. Every time he go to a high school to play, they change coaches and they go to a, a system like an option. He wants to throw the football, so he <laughs> transferred, ended up at Long Beach Poly. Actually played against Josh Rosen. Got beat by Josh Ro uh, Rosen and St. John's Bosco in the California high school football playoffs back in 2014. That pass is caught again. Another one. This one's getting closer to midfield out over the 40 to the 42. A gain of 16. That one goes to Blackwell. But Rosen, a guy that actually in high school, he completed passes as a junior to Juju Smith-Schuster. He's making some money now, as is Josh Rosen. Yeah, a couple bucks. But didn't really get to play very much. He was kind of considered a, a backup quarterback as a junior. And so after his junior year, had zero scholarship offers. Batted in the air and incomplete. As a senior, started to put together some numbers. But by then, he was getting some, some looks. But he was late to the game, as he said. San Jose State offered him an opportunity to come as a preferred walk-on, and he said, I'll take my chances. He waited a couple years and then got some starts, and here he is as a fifth-year senior leading this San Jose State offense. And the number one thing that's helped him is this is the first time they've had consistency with their coordinator. Second year in the system, same year, same guy calling the plays. Arkansas. With some pressure, and Rosen throws it. It is caught, but out of bounds by Trey Walker. Heck of an effort over there by number 10, Jarquez McClellan. On the coverage, and there's a flag in the backfield. Nice catch by Walker right there. Caught out of bounds, but nice catch. It's right where the quarterback was hit, so make sure. That's no foul for roughing the pass. Second down. That's about the first thing that's gone well for Arkansas <laughs> defensively tonight. That's one of the first times we've seen Josh Love on his back. First time we've seen some real yeah. pressure out of his Arkansas defensive front. And here you go, third and long here. What does Chief decide to do? Does he decide to bring some pressure? Looks like he got man coverage on the outside. Asking his receivers to win is Josh Love right here. Sosa again lining up over the center. Felt like there was some movement there. False start. Offense. Number 78. Five yard penalty. Third down. Well, that'll make it third down and 15. Five penalties for 52 yards against San Jose State tonight. And here's a scenario they've been in a couple times. They've had an opportunity to make a tackle here. You see they're playing the sticks on the back end. Drop it down, rally, and make your tackle is what John Chambers wants his defense to do here. Corner pressure. Throw to the wide side of the field. Close to the first down. Gain of 14. There goes Trey Walker again. He's going to be about a yard shy. Wow, how big was that false start? Now they're going to go for it. They're going to keep the offense on the field here on fourth and one. Why not? They say they didn't come across the country to punt the football here and up 24 to 7. What do you got to lose here? You know it's a field position game, but big momentum play here. Walker goes in motion. Timeout taken by Arkansas. 
We'll step aside, fourth down and one when we come back. the best. Our kicker stubs his toe on the ball and pretty sure our mascot has his costume on backwards. But this, this is our team. No matter what. If you're wondering why Arkansas had to take a timeout, this is the reason why. 12 guys on the field here for Arkansas. And that's why you had to take the timeout on this big fourth and one. San Jose State keeps their offense on the field. See what they dial up here. Arkansas failed on two fourth down conversions tonight. First one for the Spartans. Walker goes in motion. Trying to throw that way. They'll go underneath. They'll pass will be caught but incomplete. Incomplete as they were trying to hit Billy Humphreys the tight end and Arkansas will get it up on downs This is the style of defense that you want fast guys pursuing to the football Guys doing their job. That's a catch. You got to make though. That would have been really close to the first down marker And you see love Saying a missed opportunity there Arkansas take a great field position, but can they capitalize on it here? Three interceptions tonight for Nick Starkle. Sixteen of thirty, one ninety-two. They just can't block him. They cannot block San Jose State. That's a loss of four. Kyle Harmon, another big play. And watch 45, Kyle Harmon right here. He's just going to run right through here and make the play. Nobody blocks it. Just a clean run through. It's hard to, to run the football when you don't block a guy like Kyle Harmon. Second down and long. Starkle takes another shot, and that one is batted around. Almost picked off. He was trying to hit Trey Knox. The more Ziegler on that coverage. There's Ben Hicks who started the first two games. In the second half against Ole Miss in week two. Turned over the reins to Nick Starkle who has held them since. But it has not been pretty for Nick. Tonight. Yeah, no rhythm, no continuity. I mean, you've had spurts of running the football, but... Passing the football has not been what we saw last week out of Nick Starkle. Starkle hit again. Pass is caught this time down around the 35. That's a first down. They went to the freshman Knox. Pick up of 18. Kate Hall does a great job getting pressure on him, but watch this route here. Nothing but a corner route like smash concept into cover two. And Starkle does a great job of landing right in the hole between the corner and the safety. One of Starkle's best throws, but he still ended up on his back. Jay Leonard being helped off the field. That is why the whistle stopped play for a moment. 9.51 to go here in the third quarter. Jay with an interception tonight and four tackles. Again, no Colton Jackson and left guard, left tackle today for Arkansas. Out with an injured foot. Pressure comes right from that left tackle spot, but Starkle gets the pass off to Devil Whaley. He's down to the 11-yard line, a 23-yard pickup. 
And Arkansas in the red zone. San Jose State goes with the blitz, tries to dial it up, but Nick Starkle recognizes the zone, the voided zone and gets the football out to Whaley for a big game. Throwing it up to the end zone, looking for Knox incomplete. Zamor Ziegler back there in coverage for the Spartans. And you see Knox is outside. He's 6'5", going against Ziegler, who's 5'10". And falling away from that football, if he has a chance to go up and get it, basketball style, maybe comes down with it. But great job of Ziegler fighting up on the edge with Knox. Arkansas, Arkansas's red zone touchdown percentage is not where you want it. They're just six out of 14 in scoring touchdowns. And whistles will stop this play. Chad Morris going to take a timeout. That'll be their second timeout of the half. He knows how important this scenario is, this drive for the Hogs, down 24 to 7. Yeah, you've been down here a couple times, and you're not been able to capitalize, get any kind of points out of it. So this is a critical drive for Arkansas here to get points. And you need more than just a field goal here. You need to score a touchdown here to give your team any kind of momentum and excitement as this third quarter goes on. Let's go down the sidelines, check in with Dawn. Guys, uh, to be able to do that, they're going to have to do a better job of protecting Nick Starkle. He has been on his back this entire drive. Uh, also, one thing to know, right tackle, Dalton Wagner, number 78, was in the injury tent for a bit, came out and ran to the locker room. So down another offensive lineman. Uh, Davey miss, mentioned already missing Colton Jackson, who is on the sideline in a boot on his right foot. He suffered a, a foot injury back in camp, so he is in a boot today, not playing. That's down two offensive line starters for them. Yeah, Kirby Adcock in that lineup now for Arkansas up front on a second down and 10. He'll run it on the ground to Devil Whaley. Kicks it to the outside, and he is blistered as he gets to the sidelines. Trey Webb will get credit for the tackle, a gain of five. So now it's third down and five coming up. And the guy who plays, replaced Dalton Wagner there, Number 71, Ryan Winkle. They come right back and run to his side. They do a great job of getting the edge. And you see the red shirt freshman there. Ryan Winkle, 6'6", 285. Out of Memphis, Tennessee, getting some action here in the third quarter. Well, you got a lineup of Cunningham, Adcock, Ty Clary at center, Stromberg, the true freshman, and Ryan Winkle, the red shirt freshman, up front for Arkansas. Starkle to throw. Toward the end zone, and that one is picked off. The fourth pick of the game. My goodness, Nehemiah Shelton grabs that one. And if it wasn't for a good tackle, he was about to take it the distance. Four turnovers for him. And watch him. Gets hit right at the end of this foot. Little late here. Ball coming out. Shelton coming out with a huge interception. Arkansas in trouble here early in the third quarter. better than having fast, reliable Wi-Fi with coverage throughout your home? How about having internet that can help you save on your wireless bill? Xfinity gives you the most reliable internet for all your devices and the fastest speeds from America's best internet provider so you can easily stream all your favorite movies and TV shows. Plus, save hundreds of dollars a year when you get Xfinity internet and mobile together. Now that's simple, easy, awesome. Click, call, or visit a store today. Lonely feeling right now for Chad Morris. His last three drives have ended in interceptions. And it begs the question, DJ, and I know it's Nick Starkle is his guy, right? I mean, he's yep. sold us the last two weeks. He doesn't want him to have to look over his shoulders. But four interceptions. At what point do you throw that out the window and say, oh, we got to make a change? Yeah, I, in my in my, I think now is the opportunity. I mean, four interceptions. You've gotten the red zone a couple times. You tried to give him a chance to come out of this slump. Just had not been able to come out of it. It may be time. 
McNash loses the football, but will fall on it. He came in to start this drive. The all everything quarterback, running back, wide receiver. Well, that could have been a costly mistake. Now it's second down, and you're really chasing the chain. Second down and about 15. That's one thing that San Jose State has done really well, has been good on first and second down. Now getting behind the change. But you got to wonder, Nick Nash in the ball game, do you allow him to throw the football? But he know when he's in the ball game, he's really been focused on using his legs. Hand it off to Dijon Packer. Got a yard on that play for the big six, uh, excuse me, 5'11", 225-pound running back. They've got two of those big boys. Tyler Nevins, the other back, six foot, 225. Some big old boys now. Third down and 13. Backed up with a freshman quarterback. Going to the far side, and Trey Walker lays out for it, but just couldn't catch up to it. Jarquez McClellan back there in coverage. I don't know if I'd be dancing around down 24 to 7. <laughs> I know, right? Made a good play, though, man. You got to give the guys some credit. They went after him a few times, and he's kind of held his own over there. Didn't get the P.I. penalty. Now you get the football in great field position here. This punt will sail out of bounds. Let's see where they mark it at the 45-yard line. 44-yard punt. Nick Starkle. This has just not been his night. Four interceptions. Yeah, a lot of these have been forced. Right there, the linebacker's underneath the crossing route here. It's right before the half. He's trying to stick it in there and fit it between three different players. You've been late on a couple balls here. You got hit while you're throwing it on that particular throw. And this one's just inexcusable. In the, inside the 10-yard line, you throw interception. This has been a nightmare night for Nick Starkle, and only way he comes out of it, he has to go out and make a big play here. Three-man rush, Starkle to swing it to Boyd, and Rakeem into San Jose State territory. Give him seven and a half. And you got to wonder if he's eyeing a lot of these routes, because San Jose State, when they get these interceptions, they're going right to the football as if you know, he's kind of telegraphing what he's going with the football. So he has to do a better job of reading the defense, seeing what's happening, and then getting it out of his hand. He'll go with Boyd. Turns the corner and has the first down around the 35-yard line. Gain of 12. Rakeem Boyd now, 61 yards on 13 carries. There is a downed San Jose State defender, yeah, that's Nehemiah Shelton. Shelton. Just had that big interception. McGuire has a pick. Jay Leonard has a pick. Shelton has a pick. Bobby Brown has an interception. Shelton has eight tackles. A couple of passes broken up and an interception today. If you're Chad Morris and Joe Craig, the offensive coordinator, it's real interesting how you go about calling plays now because after throwing four interceptions, it's hard for any quarterback to have any kind of confidence right now. And when you throw four <laughs> interceptions, the field shrinks. It looks like you're playing yeah. with 15 guys on the field. You got to wonder if everything's going to be short, intermediate, trying to get him some easy passes in his ball game. Because right now, he's not seeing the entire field. Well, it's just been one of those nights where if it could go wrong, it has gone wrong for this Arkansas team. There felt like, you know, being around the football offices yesterday, DJ, it just really felt like 
there was a change in, in attitude, excitement level. Um, it was just, uh, it was a different atmosphere, but boy, that can go away in a hurry. And I think Chad Morris kind of knew that. Yeah, uh, the momentum of this ball game, the momentum of how things have transpired has really put, it looks like this team in a funk right now yeah. on both sides of the ball. I mean, they haven't looked like the same team we saw last week, the same energy. And I don't know if it's the four picks you throw on offense, but defensively, you haven't done a good job of stopping this San Jose State offense either. You wonder, though, if some of these guys like Nick Starkle and Rakeem Boyd, they know next week they got to hit the road, go to Dallas and take on Texas yeah. A&M. That's a place those two guys certainly uh, have some memories of, some yeah. good, some not so good. You wonder how much of an impact that's had on this. That's, that's a really good point there because as much as they will say, yeah, we're not thinking about it, they're looking at, hey, we got a big-time ball game next week. A lot of guys going into SEC play. You talk about Starkle right. and Boy playing against their former team. That's a big thing in the mind of a guy like Nick Starkle. Maybe he looked ahead a little bit to say, hey, I got some vengeance on my hand. We, you, you talked about it earlier how he felt he should have been the guy at Texas yeah. A&M and have an opportunity to go back there and play. I'm sure he has dreamed about that. But now, I mean, with the way this has gone, even if you come back and win this game, you got to wonder how fragile are these guys now. Right. The confidence has to be a little shot on both sides of the ball for these guys. Next week is so far down the road. San Jose State has your number right now. And you're going to have to fight and claw to yeah. get out of this ball game with a win. Hey, San Jose State to this point has played about as, as well as I think anybody on that sideline could have expected. They have done everything well. They've been in the right spots and making the plays when they're there. Here's Knox trying to make a play on the sideline. That one will be incomplete. Brandon Ezell in coverage. And again, there is no Traylon Burks, the other superstar true freshman receiver out of Warren, Arkansas. He is out in concussion protocol. They hope to have him back next week against Texas A&M. All indications are that he is progressing fine through all of the protocol. The boy missing Colton Jackson and Burks. And you can see right there Devil Whaley having to dodge some white jerseys trying to make something out of nothing. He only ended up losing about four but he could have lost about ten. Yeah number 68 Kirby Adcock gets beat across his face. And this is what causes the penetration right through that over the left guard Kirby Adcock gets beat by Cade Hall and you see just Devon Woody trying to make something out of nothing. That could have been a bigger loss than it already was. Third and 14. Arkansas 40% tonight. Came in 38% on the season. Four man rush. Dump it underneath to Whaley. He's not going to get there. Down to the 28. Are you thinking about going for it here on fourth down? What should be about two or three yards. Aguayo with that tackle, and there's an injured Spartan back in the backfield. Yeah, I think this is the time, even though you got a you got a guy down there, points are of the essence right now. You have been struggling to get any kind of points on the board since that first half. Three seven, you got to get points right here. We'll take a timeout. Back in a moment. Take a look at Fansville, brought to you by Dr. Pepper. And, well, you know pregame, you're going to get some folks calling the Hogs here in Fayetteville. It's been a gorgeous day, and that is spectacular tailgate. Kudos to that group. <laughs> Chandeliers in that tent right there. But there hadn't been a whole lot of calling the Hogs here tonight inside the confines of Reynolds Razorback Stadium. Connor Limpert to attempt a 48-yard field goal. He has got a booming leg and does not disappoint here. He has been fantastic the last few games. 
Able to split the uprights on that one. Connor now six out of seven on the year. Hit from 54 last week, 48 tonight. And that's exactly what they needed. They needed points. They needed something to build on as they've been down there a few times and a good job of, of getting three points there. Now you're only down by 14. But defensively, you got to get a stop like you did last time. Create your own turnovers. Create your own momentum here. First Arkansas point since a minute to go in the first quarter. Monday at 7 Eastern, 6 Central, Thinking Out Loud, presented by Regents Bank. is back for another season. Greg McElroy, Marcus Spears, they'll break down the weekend on the gridiron, talk about the hottest topics for the coming week. It's all right here on the SEC Network and, of course, on the ESPN app. I wonder what that show's going to be like in November when Schwagoo's LSU and G-Max Alabama meet up. Well, that is shaping up to be another so-called game of the century between Man. those teams, right? Joe Burrow looks all world right now. Josh Love, 21 of 34, 282. What have you liked about his game? He's been very decisive with the football. You can see where he's throwing the football the most outside the numbers on the left or the right side. Only one completion on the inside there, but look at that right side, 9 of 11. And I'm telling you, that may be a lot of where Trey Walker has lined up in this ball game. But Josh Love has been decisive. He's throwing the football with tons of confidence. And he has been the better quarterback in this ball game today between him and Nick Starkle. And I don't think a lot of people may have thought that coming into this ball game. Who would outplay one? But Josh Love has definitely done that. Josh Love back on the field at quarterback this possession. He will look to throw on first down. Rolls right. Pass is caught near side. That one goes to Isaiah Hamilton. Boy, the patience from Josh Love to let that develop shows you the savvy fifth year senior has. Dave, I think you played quarterback before. Me. That's exactly what he did there. He kept looking down the field. He let everything on the back end kind of back up a little bit and just dumped it down to his outlet. And again, that's another throw to that right side. He feels comfortable over there. Everything through the open side, but he's just taking what Arkansas is giving him. First down and 10 for the 42. Inside handoff. Boy, Nevin still on his feet, dragging some defenders with him, still running. The piles to the 35. Will they stop him? Finally. 23-yard game. Look at this effort. I mean, just look at this Mack truck. Run through Fouché right there. And there's five Arkansas defenders on him. And then here comes the big boys. It's the offensive lineman pushing him for another seven, eight yards. And that whole San Jose State off sideline was just going crazy over there after that big run. Now they bring in another big back and Dejon Packer, he goes 225. Play action, pass caught over the middle of the field. Another first down, and that goes to guess who? Trey Walker, 15 more yards. Trey is putting up some unbelievable numbers tonight. And here's the thing. Nine catches, 118 on 12 targets. You run the ball effective. You put the ball into the gut of the running back. Here comes the safety flat up, and here comes Trey Walker right behind it. He's caught at least seven passes just like that in this ball game, where he just replaces where the safety leaves because he's coming up for run support. 314 yards through the air for Josh Love. That's Nick Nash. We'll check in at quarterback. He scored from about this spot earlier today. He gets hit around the 15. A flag comes in right in the area of holding. Hubert Owens, our referee, threw that flag, and he'll give us the call. Holding. Offense, number 87, 10-yard penalty. They play first down. You know what I like when Hubert throws the flag? Is that there's no discussion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he doesn't have to get anything talked about with anybody else. I got this, fellas. So that'll back him up, see if they switch out quarterbacks. They do as Josh Love is back on the field. 
So first down and 20. Well, this is a big time response. Arkansas gets the field goal to cut the lead to 14. Near San Jose State already down in Arkansas territory. Six on the line for Arkansas. The wide side, get it to the tight end, Derek Deese. No gain on the play, so second down and 20 coming up. Gabe Richardson with that tackle, his first of the night. We have not mentioned this defensive front much at all. Sosa Game has a tackle. Zach Williams hadn't had anything. Gabe Richardson with one tackle. Solely with two tackle. I mean, there just hadn't been much production out of that front group. Yeah, because that offensive line of San Jose, San Jose State has controlled them. There's been a stalemate. There's been some movement by them, but they've been dominating. Love. This time, they get to him. Demario Bell. Loss of nine. First sack of the game for the Hogs. Must have heard me. Yeah, here comes Jamario Bell. He's going to come right off his edge, right through here, unblocked. And you're going to see just a perfect job here. Look at the E.T. stunt. Guard misses it. Just a great job there of getting up field and nowhere for Josh Love to go with that football. Well, you got to think that San Jose State here just wants to get this in field goal range. Get it near the 30, and you give your guy a shot to make it a three-possession game. Arkansas all, all over it. They were trying to set up a little tunnel screen over there to Walker. They were all over it. Gabe Richardson ran right to it. I mean, yeah. you think he was in the huddle and got the huddle call. He went right down from the line of scrimmage and right to the tunnel screen. And you're right. They were trying to pick up some, just some extra yeah. yards to give their field goal an opportunity. Instead, they'll have to punt it away. Nathan Perotti back to return this punt, end over end kick. That will hit at the 10 at San Jose State. Can't stop it. Oh, my goodness. They were there waiting for it. Wow. Trey Walker's caught everything around him all day. The one time they really need, he kicks it. <laughs> WGU is changing higher education for the better, so you can change your life for the better. WGU, a new kind of you. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. Well, things start to shake out a little bit as we move on to the end of September next week. Arkansas is trying to pick up some offensive yardage here. As you look at the college football AP top 10 right now. And Clemson sitting there at number one. Alabama didn't do anything to hurt themselves. Georgia in a real fight with Notre Dame right now. Tied at 10. LSU looked good. Ohio State another big day. Nothing doing there off the left side. Well, DJ, how's Arkansas going to move the football? I mean, it's a simple question, but it's probably difficult to answer. I think they got to go back to some of the perimeter runs they had going on, some of their just throw it in space, let these guys go. We saw Warren in the first half make some big plays when he caught some jet sweeps, some bubbles. That brings up another third and short. We saw in the first half they struggled a lot on short yardage. No gain on third and short. It'll now be fourth and a yard. Oh, boy. That may be the last play of this third quarter. Rakeem Boyd. I mean, could it get any worse right now for Arkansas? Boyd limps to the sideline. We'll see what the Hawks want to do.
What's better than having fast, reliable Wi-Fi with coverage throughout your home? How about having internet that can help you save on your wireless bill? Xfinity gives you the most reliable internet for all your devices and the fastest speeds from America's best internet provider so you can easily stream all your favorite movies and TV shows. Plus, save hundreds of dollars a year when you get Xfinity internet and mobile together. Now that's simple, easy, awesome. Click, call, or visit a store today. Time to take a look at our 15 minutes or less brought to you by GEICO. Tail of two quarterbacks here. One quarterback is taking care of the football, throwing a couple touchdowns, distributing the football really well, got it to his playmaker in his face. And on the other side for Nick Starkle, four interceptions in this ball game have hurt his Arkansas team in critical situations. Josh Love is out playing Nick Starkle at home. Fourth down and a yard. Arkansas going to go for it, backed up inside the 30. They'll pitch it to Whaley. Plenty of room to run. The first down at the 45. He'll pick up 16 yards. One of the better run plays designed by the Hawks tonight. Perfect play call. You know San Jose State was going to go all out for the run. A good misdirection play there. And Whaley on a corner on the edge, a perimeter run there. Pick up a big first down. Pass is caught. Nine yard pick up there by Trey Knox. For Knox, his sixth catch of the night. Tempo, tempo, tempo. Got to get some completions. Take care of the football. Whaley. He'll have the first down, pick up a four. We saw Rakeem Boyd limp off the field right before he went to that last timeout at the end of the quarter. So Dev Whaley is on his shoulders at the moment. And one thing we got to pay attention to is that San Jose State defensive line. Have they worn down? We talked about how they keep guys in there. They roll them in and out up to nine, ten guys. Good protection. Starkle to the corner of the end zone, and that one is incomplete. Trying to hit TQ Jackson, the true freshman out of Jefferson, Texas. Nehemiah Shelton back there running with him. Of course it's Shelton running with him. He's been all over the field today. He made that interception early in the ball game. He has played some outstanding football for San Jose State in that back end. Looks like former track star Ronaldo Nehemiah. Boy, he has been sprinting down those sidelines for the Spartans tonight. Second down and 10. O'Grady spins out of trouble. Boy, that had makings of another one like we saw last <laughs> week, breaking about five tackles. But he is brought to the turf, a first down. Ethan Aguayo missed the tackle there. Allowed O'Grady to pick up the first down. I almost expected Grady to carry about four guys there. Disappointing, it was only three. Quick hitter over the middle, pass is caught. Tyson Morris on his feet to the end zone. Touchdown, Arkansas. Exactly what you needed, just somebody to make a play on the outside. Break a tackle, easy pitch and catch on a slant. Tyson Morris, 6'1", 200 pounds, does the rest. And Nick Starkle can take a deep breath there. They needed that. Back to a seven-point game. Connor Limpert's point after is through the uprights. Tyson Morris had caught one pass in each of the first three games. He has four receptions tonight, including this 30-yarder. Yeah, backside slant here right behind that linebacker off the play action. And he just throws the defender to the ground. And just an extra effort play here. And you can see it from the top. Watch that safety come down. And here he is right behind him after the play action. He does a great job of eluding one of those defenders and getting into the end zone for a huge play and early in this fourth quarter only down by seven 
Arkansas needed that. Nick Starkle up over 300 yards again. Hawks down a touchdown. seem unreachable at first. The bar too high. Shoes too big. You'll take leaps of faith and fall on your face. But you'll get up. Hard work is 50 sprints before breakfast and another 50 for breakfast. You'll eat it. Breathe it. Sleep it. The Goodyear blimp doesn't show up for just anybody. So don't be just anybody. Be limp worthy. Goodyear. More driven. Of the game by Arkansas, nine plays, 80 yards, 30-yard touchdown catch by Tyson Morris. Has pulled Arkansas to within seven. And San Jose State will get it out at the 25-yard line. How will the Spartans respond? As this is, uh, the dynamics have definitely changed here. Yeah, and even after that last drive, uh, you can see their last three drives haven't been ideal. Well, they were moving the football last drive till they got the holding call that put them all the way back, and then they got the sack, so they were behind the chains last drive, even though they moved the football. This is even more critical, I think, for Arkansas to get off the field again. Can their defense do it again? Can they play sound on the back end? Can they get any rush on Josh Love? 24-38, 313 for the senior quarterback. Underneath pass is caught by the tight end, Brett Foley. Gain of four. And that's what they needed. They just needed to get something positive on first down. And you see the Chief right there in the middle, John Chavis, defensive coordinator, trying to dial up some stuff to push some pressure on Josh Love because they haven't been able to get to him. They got to him last series. You got to wonder if he's going to come back to that. And he's thrown it 39 times, only been sacked once. There's been three pressures. Gain of about two from Dijon Park, uh, Packer as Scooter Harris picks up his fifth tackle. This is a pressure scheme defense. Expect pressure here on third down. Cannot allow Josh Love to sit back there. is caught Isaiah Hamilton out over the 40 has the first down picks up 12 Joe Fouché making the tackle and it's what we talked about in the first half just some bad tackling on the in the secondary do a good job of allowing the catch it before it gets to the first down marker and you just need to come to and tackle not leveraging the football good Four-man rush, Love throws, incomplete. Flag comes in. Dark West McClellan in coverage. Pass on the first. Defense, number four. The ball is placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. It's been a physical ball game on the outside for the most part. And McLean has done a really good job throughout this ball game of not getting there too early. And you got to wonder if he got there just a half a second to roll or if that right hand is what they called it, which was wrapped around the receiver before the football got there. They'll line up on Blackwell again. First down and 10. 
to the outside to the 45 yard line, a gain of five. That goes to Andre Crump. His first reception of the game, the true freshman at Elk Grove, California. Staying on schedule is what they've done really good on this drive here on first down. Over the middle, knocked out of there by Bumper Pool. That was such a great job just recognizing what's happening here. Another big third down here for San Jose State. Can they convert? The Believers out in force. <laughs> it was there for the first down, but it was dropped by Brett Foley. He moved from linebacker to tight end last year. Just couldn't hang on. He was there for the first down. Watch the great job of moving here. Get some pressure right up the middle, but move just a little bit. And you got to wonder if right yeah, at the it, last minute, Scooter Harris. Yeah, does he get a, yeah, does he get a finger on it right here? Oh, yeah, he got just enough. Oh, what a job there by Scooter Harris getting a hand in there. Outstanding play by their senior linebacker. That'll sail into the end zone. 10.31 to go. Arkansas's last drive, their best of the night, it went 80 yards in nine plays. Yeah, that was a big play on fourth and one. They're all the way backed up. And using the play action, the run game to get going here. Sticking that ball in there, and now you see the individual effort on the outside. Maybe one guy miss, and getting it to the end zone is what you needed there from Tyson Morris. Well, for the second consecutive week, Nick Starkle goes for 300 yards. Matter of fact, he was the first quarterback since uh, back in 2017 to throw for 300 yards for Arkansas. And he's done a back-to-back -back games now. That picks up five as he goes to Cheyenne O'Grady. If he's able to rally his football team back to, to tie this ball game up and possibly get him a chance to win this ball game, the mentality that he has it's going to go a long way after throwing four interceptions today. Here's Boyd. He left the game hobbling a few possessions ago. Good to see him back on the field. Defended well by Shelton again, who said his name a bunch today. Nine tackles and an interception. A couple of passes broken up as well. Been a star for him for sure. Third down. Three man rush. Right through the hands of Mike Woods. Now it's fourth down. I got to think, you got to punt this. Yeah, you, you still got plenty of time. You got nine minutes on the clock left. But you got to wonder here, with nine minutes to go in the ball game, you had to use two of those big timeouts yeah. in the third quarter. Do those timeouts come out to hurt, come back to hurt you later in this ball game? And one of them was for having too many men on the field defensively. Lloyd's punt high and short. Fair catch call for that'll hit and take a favorable Spartan bounce. We'll spot it around the 44 yard line. Short field for Josh Love. It can seem unreachable at first. The bar too high, shoes too big. You'll take leaps of faith and fall on your face. But you'll get up. Hard work is 50 sprints before breakfast and another 54 breakfast. You'll eat it. 
breathe it, sleep it. The Goodyear blimp doesn't show up for just anybody. So don't be just anybody. Be limp worthy. Goodyear, more driven. What's better than having fast, reliable Wi-Fi with coverage throughout your home? How about having internet that can help you save on your wireless bill? Xfinity gives you the most reliable internet for all your devices and the fastest speeds from America's best internet provider so you can easily stream all your favorite movies and TV shows. Plus, save hundreds of dollars a year when you get Xfinity internet and mobile together. Now that's simple, easy, awesome. Click, call, or visit a store today. Spartans by seven as we go back to the studio for the comeback moment supplemented by Aflac. Thank you, Dar. Definitely a good win for the Bulldogs. First down and 10 for the Spartans here. Tyler Nevins picks up three. Well, now you're fighting that clock. And all San Jose State wants to do is get a couple first downs, take even more time off the clock. As Arkansas has struggled to score more points in this second half. Comes in late on the incomplete pass. Holding offense number seven, 10 yard penalty. Second down. Well, penalties on their last drive pushed him out of field goal range. And that's even crucial now because of where you're at on the field. It's a field position game. You can come up with a big stop here. The way San Jose State was, it was going to be a long field for Arkansas to go. Love steps up in the pocket, hits Walker. Well, spot his forward progress around the 48. Give him 12, but he'll be about five yards shy of the line to make. I tell you, so impressed with Josh Love. They bring the pressure off the edge. Look at him fight inside the pocket. Just climb up in the pocket and deliver a strike right there to Trey Walker. Outstanding job of Love here today. He is really impressed today with his ability to get his team into some favorable spots here on third down. It looks like Arkansas is coming with pressure. Play clock was winding down, and Coach Brennan. Got the timeout just in time. 7.34 to go, third and six when we come back. than having fast, reliable Wi-Fi with coverage throughout your home? How about having internet that can help you save on your wireless bill? Xfinity gives you the most reliable internet for all your devices and the fastest speeds from America's best internet provider so you can easily stream all your favorite movies and TV shows. Plus, save hundreds of dollars a year when you get Xfinity internet and mobile together. Now that's simple, easy, awesome. Click, call, or visit a store today. 
Coming up after this game, SEC Now will give you a complete wrap-up with highlights, analysis, and interviews from the day in college football. It's been a long, busy day for sure. Dari, Chris, Gene, they'll have it all covered for you. You can also see it streaming live on the ESPN app. It is third down and six. Arkansas bringing the heat. Love going up top. There's a flag. Walker pulled to the turf by Ladarius Bishop. Ten catches tonight for Mr. Walker for 131 yards. That won't go as a catch, but that could be one of his bigger plays of the night. Passing the Bears. Defense, number 24. 15-yard penalty. penalty. And they got exactly what they wanted, man coverage here. But I think because the ball is thrown a little behind him and he has to come back for the football, that's where the penalty came in because he's trying to fight back for the football. And he kind of pushes through Walker there. First and 10 now from the 37-yard line. Underneath, pass is caught. That'll go to Billy Humphreys. Not much on the game. Sounds like State in a perfect world would love to just get a couple more first downs, run two, three, four minutes more off this clock. And they'll take the three, right? And take the three, make it a 10-point ball game. Second down, seven. Inside handoff goes to Nevins. Met there at the front line by Scooter Harris. And what, a, what a great job he did there. Of getting off a block and getting vertical and stymieing the running back right in the middle of that hole. This individual effort there by one of your leaders on defense having to step up here. So things like we said it a lot in the second half. This is a huge third down here again. Moving closer to six minutes. Play clock down to one. They just do get it off. Low snap. Love. Looked like he just threw that one away. He could sense Cam Curl in the area. That'll stop the clock at 5.59. They're at the, well, I tell you what, they're right at that. Remember he said to us that Mercurio feels good. He feels good, not necessarily good, but he'd yeah. give a shot at like 50. This would be 51, but they're going to decide to punt it away. Look, you like your odds here, forcing a Nick Starkle offense that struggled tonight. Make him go 90 yards for it. End over end kick. That will hit and bounce into the end zone again. Another Spartan defender at the goal line, but can't stop it short. Here comes Nick Starkle. Southwest Conference. Conference rivals once again. And AM starts with the football and they start with a big play on the kickoff return. And it's a touchdown. And that look from Chad Morris says it all. Some life for Arkansas. Story with a shot down the sideline. And it's intercepted. Chad Morris's team put up quite a fight. Sure did. AM is going to survive. 
And that's what's coming up next for this Arkansas team, but they got to somehow fight through this one down seven. They'll start this drive with Rakeem Boyd getting the handoff, and he's out near the 37-yard line where he has stopped the whistle blows, a gain of 18. Flags come flying in. One, two, three flags on the play. After the play was over, a sportsmanlike conduct foul, number four on the defense. So Asilatu, the big 300-pounder in the middle of that line. Extra yardage here. He's just fighting. And now you hear the Wilson's blow. You see a lot of guys in there fighting. And it's always the last guy you get there, Latoya, at the end there. Getting a little extra frisky in there. Boy, that'll move the football. To the 47 yard line of San Jose State. Stark with the throw, lost it up for Knox, makes the catch, he's out of bounds. 6'5, 205, true freshman. Beautiful pitch and catch there. Trey Knox did a back shoulder throw. Giving his guy a chance. An eligible player downfield, offense oh. number 66. Five yard penalty, first down. That's the center, Ty Clary. My goodness. Well, that's why those plays hurt you sometimes. It's an RPO. You can either give it or you can, you can throw it. And you see the center, 66, right in the middle. It's a... They think it's run, and Starko has the opportunity to throw the football if he wishes. Just has to come out a little bit sooner before Clary gets upfield because he's thinking it's a run. Arkansas with just one timeout remaining. They'll run it right side with Boyd. He slips on the turf as he is wrapped up there by Kyle Harmon. Tell you what, I'm, I've been watching. Jesse Osuna, the last few plays, he has gotten his nose to a few little skirmishes post play. Yeah, Osuna's not backing out at all. He's a little nope. chippy. Watch him right here down near the sideline down here. Coming in right there, a little extra shot right here. Coach Moore is hot right there on the sideline. Second down and 12 now, bringing a little pressure. They'll try to set up the screen, but Knox had his knee on the turf at midfield. A loss of a yard, so now it's third and 13. Yeah, and I saw Starkwood immediately put his head down because that's on him. He got to get, he has to give him a catchable football that he can do something with because they had to set up pretty good with a couple linemen out there. So you thinking four downs here, clocks at 4-12. Oh, he only got one timeout left. This third down play may be a call that can help you have a, an easier chance at fourth down, but you may not get the football again. We go under four minutes. O'Grady in motion. Trying to get it all here, including the touchdown. Catch is made at the 10-yard line. Mike Woods coming up with a play. This has been one of the matchups you look at all night. Zamore, Ziegler, and Woods on the outside. One-on-one. -on -one. Starkle putting his guy up the bat, and he's making the play. Whaley off the right side. He'll fall forward for a couple. That's inside the 10, down to around the 7. Just watch how good of a ball. This ball is thrown a little bit inside. Watch him come inside and track it a little bit. Slows his body down and makes him... Just a really good catch on the outside. 
But we've seen Arkansas down here plenty of times tonight. Over the middle, too high. Starkle had his man in the end zone. Cheyenne O'Grady was there. He just airmailed it. This is the one where you got to have a little touch. Starkle just drop it in the bucket here. There's nobody around him. You drop that in the bucket, he's going to come down with it. That's your big tight end O'Grady. He's running about 6'4". Third and goal. 3-0-2 to play. Three-man rush over the middle. Touchdown, Arkansas. Trey Knox hanging on. Boy, what a job by Trey Knox. He took a shot as he made the catch and held on to the football. Eight catches, 83 yards for the true freshman. The point after is up and good, and we are tied at 24. There is a flag down. Holding. Offense. Oh, boy. 14. 10 yard penalty. Repeat the try. Boy, now you're putting some heat on your kicker, Limpert. Just in case you want a little bit more suspense, Dave, that's all. This won't phase Limpert, though. We've seen Limpert crush him for at least 55. This will be basically a 30-yard extra point to tie it up. And he is perfect. It's almost better further away for Connor. <laughs> wow, Trey Knox. Without his partner, Traylon Burks, who's out injured, coming up big. Young guy making plays for his quarterback. Mike Woods on just a simple go route, man coverage on one of their best corners, using his body to defend the de defender. And then this true freshman here, how good is he going to be? Knowing he's going to take a shot, holds on to the football. And you don't think Starkle is excited and happy? No, especially after he <laughs> overthrew O'Grady wide open in the end zone. You know he wanted that one. He is now 28 of 49, 356, three TDs, but those four interceptions. Now the question is, can Arkansas's defense make yep. some plays? And we've seen San Jose State go up and down the field this entire ball game. And they've shot themselves in the foot a couple times in this second half. Or they could have had more points on the board. But how about we give Chad Morris a lot of credit? Leaving Nick Starkle in the ball game after four interceptions to bring his team back. We've had 700 yards of passing offense in this game. Over 900 yards of total offense. And we're tied at 24. Brent Brennan's club led 24-7. It's now knotted up at 24, but you've got an experienced quarterback. Josh Love, the fifth-year senior, but they have been stuck in the Arkansas mud four consecutive punts. And now this crowd is into it. They got something to cheer about. His defense can kind of pin their ears back and come after him now. And they'll start this drive. And now a whistle will stop play. The left game. Offense, number 12. That's not a good way to start the drive. Talked about staying on schedule. They have not been able to stay on schedule in the second half. Just Foolish penalties that really hurt San Jose State. Nick Nash in the game. He'll line up as a running back to the left of Josh Love. 
Right, moves over to the right. We'll toss it to him. He'll cut it back. Makes a couple of guys miss. He'll get the yardage back and then maybe a, a bonus yard. So give him six. Boy, when they toss it to him like that, you know he's always a threat to throw it to yeah. now. I was thinking the exact same thing. He's going to pull it. And that may be a setup for a little bit later. Yeah. Catch Arkansas trying to get up and make a play. He goes over their head. Couple of timeouts for the Spartans. Second down and nine. There's Walker again. Catch number 11. That's a first down as he falls out to the 39-yard line. Bumper pull and Scooter Harris combined for the tackle, but that's a dozen more yards. Walker now with 11 catches, 143 yards. It's just been there all day for Walker. He's been in that little voided area, that little skinny post, a little bit more of that slant all day. Going back to Walker. Whoa, what a circus catch. Did it right in front of Ladarius Bishop, who was slow to get up. Back shoulder throw. We've seen everything from Josh Love tonight. Giving his guy, Trey Walker, another opportunity to come down with him. He has been, he has been special for San Jose State tonight. Career high catches now for Trey Walker. Love going the other side. Pass is caught by Jaquan Blackwell. He's inside the 20, down to the 24, and the clock is at 141 and stops for a moment. Back-to-back -back plays. Defensive backs just do not turn their head around. He just continues to throw these back shoulder throws. They're getting man coverage. And John Chavis, defensive coordinator, is secondary is not showing up right now when they're being put on the island. And you can see the face of him down on the sideline. He is not happy. Last time, again, we showed you earlier, last time San Jose State beat a Power 5 team, 2006. Off the right side, big hole. There goes DeJon Packer. Touchdown, Spartans. Back out in front. Grown man drive right there for San Jose State going right down the field. Some big plays, and you end it with a powerful run like that. That is disappointing if you're an Arkansas fan. You can see the faces of the fans here just in disbelief that San Jose State was able to go right down the field on them. Mercurio with the point after attempt. Dejon Packer broke a couple of arm tackles to the end zone. That drive, five plays, 75 yards. This is called simple one-two. Running through tackles, the desire to get to the end zone, knowing what's on the line for your squad. And we've seen that all night out of Packer and Nivens. They have ran strong. 19-yard touchdown run. I would not want to be in his line of sight right now. Mm -mm. 506 yards of offense. I mean, that's hard to believe it has been that long since San Jose State knocked off a Power 5 team. They have a chance here. They're a minute and 13 seconds away from accomplishing that. This is a team that's in the third year under their coach, Brent Brennan. 4-23. and 23. Grew up. Playing football, wide receiver at UCLA. His dad was a wide receiver at San Jose State. First ever meeting between these two clubs. And the Spartans trying to close it out. Little pooch kick again. Another fair catch called for. So Nick Starkle, who has thrown for 356 yards Last drive was successful. In the fourth quarter, he has been successful. He's running out of time, though. Minute 13 on the clock, one timeout. You know, the clock stops after you get a first down. And here's the thing for Dick Starkle. The first play has to be a productive play for this offense. 
You got to kickstart this series off on a high note. Going deep, looking for Woods. That one is picked off again. Bobby Brown with his second interception, the fifth of the night for the Spartans, and you can close the book on this night for Arkansas. No need to take that shot right there. You got a whole minute to go in this ball game. They're playing prevent defense. There is no need to take that shot. They were playing two guys deep back there. Take what the defense gives you and continue to move the chains. Look at this. They got the safety sitting in the middle of the field watching you the entire time as well as a corner. It's not the best decision on a tough night and Jubilee on the sideline for San Jose State. From jubilation to disbelief. Josh Love, what a night. 32 of 49, 402 through the air. And he just uh, just kept pinpointing Walker, who has 12 catches for 161. He targeted him 16 times tonight. Wow. Boy, what a win for this guy and his program as he's trying to turn it around out in San Jose. They're getting some new football buildings. They're redoing, renovating their stadium. This will go a long way in keeping those fans, the community, with smiles on their face after what's been a tough sled here the last few seasons. For Arkansas, they got to find a way to regroup here in a hurry. This one is just a shocking outcome. Yeah, this one stings because you look at the what happened last week. You put some good things on tape. You got a big win. Avenge the loss that you had from last year. And like you said, you're looking forward to next week, but you forgot to take care of today. San Jose State was a three touchdown underdog, and they win it by seven. Put together 500 yards of offense. Arkansas 487 yards, but it was that last drive so clutch. Mainly, it was Love and Walker. The stars come out when you need them most, making big plays, but these throws by Love at the end of this ball game are the best you'll see in the country here. Back shoulder throws, give this guy's opportunity, and then the pure sheer want to, to get into the end zone and put a dagger in the heart of Arkansas. Let's get it down to the field and dawn. Guys, coach is telling me to hurry. He wants to go and talk to his team. Coach, uh, you come in here, you dominate the line of scrimmage. What does this mean to you and your players? I'm so proud of our kids. They, they played so hard, and it was amazing. I mean, <laughs> this has been so hard two years. And to see how they battled, and then it got scary at the end, and they made the plays they needed to make. The turnovers, how we ran the ball at the end of the game, is just incredible. Josh Love engineers that final drive. What did you see out of him? He's just, he's made such a huge jump in his progress as a player. And he's worked so hard. He's, he's been the starter, he's been beat out, and he comes back and he's just such a leader and such a great kid. And I'm so proud of these coaches and, and this team. It's just it's amazing. I know you want to celebrate. I'll let you go. Congrats, Coach. Thank you. Hey, Josh Love, zero scholarship offers coming out of high school, and he just won against a Power 5 team for a program that had not done that since 2006. Wow. That's, it's a special moment. It's going to be a great, great locker room and a great flight home for San Jose State. They came in and battled and played on the really flip tough. Side, on the flip side, oh. I, I know you weren't in this environment very much, where, but this has got to be hard to digest if you're Arkansas. This stings. This is one that it could easily derail the rest of your season and guys put on you you hope that doesn't happen and you hope these guys find a way to fight back but hey you're about to go into the gauntlet of what the SEC schedule and somehow some way coach Moore is gonna have to 
get these guys regrouped and get ready for a big game for Texas A&M next week. My goodness, didn't see this one coming. 31-24, the final score as San Jose State goes to two and one. Arkansas will go to two and two. Boy, good win for San Jose State and the Spartans. They'll celebrate all the way back to the West Coast. A lot of rebuilding to do in that locker room for Arkansas. 31-24, the final score for DJ, Dawn, the rest of our crew. I'm Dave Neal saying so long. Coming up next, it's SEC Now. Good night from Fayetteville.